Danny Brown. What's up? What's up? What's been the most persistent thought on your mind lately? Persistent thought on my mind? Um, um, I just really been working on music a lot. So just getting back into being like creative and shit and starting to try to like, you know, find my foot. In, I mean, I guess, you know, I've been doing music for a long time, but still finding new ways, you know, still learning. Mm. So I guess that's been the most thing for me. Just studying. You know, going back, listening to a lot of old albums that I grew up on and stuff and trying to remind myself why I liked it, mm. you know, and try to, you know, incorporate that into what I do. What kind of conclusions have you have you come to in this studying and, and learning? Um, I think for the most part is don't think too hard. Mm. I think when I live in my head too much and try to, um, you know, make shit that I think people are like or something like that just get caught up in that you know that's when i my least creative i think when i just let it happen mm. like, almost like a flow state mm. if you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah yeah. Like, yeah so when i just get into, when i'm not i feel like i'm not trying hard when it's mm. just like a higher power or something just making everything happen so that's how i've been feeling quite lately just been really fucking like you know showing gratitude to that i think that's for the most part have you figured like I've always tried to figure out some kind of equation of like what variables need to be in place for me to get into that flow state. You know what I mean? Have you have you found there are certain things that surround whether it's like people you're with or uh, as you've been eating or drinking or anything like that that kind of gets you to that flow I state? Think it's, uh, for the most part, it's just what's going on in my life. Hmm. If I got a, like a lot of drama or like a certain shit that just you know just fucking with me mentally, mm -hmm. then it's going to be hard for me to concentrate. But if I'm doing all the right shit, you know, taking care of myself and, you know, for the most part, like just, you know, staying out of trouble. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but I got everything going good in my life, even though I, I do have like crazy anxiety too when shit get like that. I don't know if other people deal with that, but mm -hmm. sometimes when stuff is just going too good for me, I'll be like, man, something's bad. Coming. Right. Like right. Impending doom. Right. What the fuck? So, right. There's almost something, the best part about things being bad is that they can't get bad they're yeah, already there yeah so but that's just living in your head mm -hmm. once i just get out of that you know stop stop thinking too much i think you know i smoke a lot of weed i think smoking weed when i thought it was you know helping with my anxiety or helping me like to feel mm -hmm. better and shit it was just making shit worse to be honest mm. you know because i find that when i smoke weed it feels like i'm like stepping on a step ladder and mm -hmm. like kind of looking at my life from this different yeah, I know point mean. of view yeah. you know do you feel like you were just kind of thinking thinking too much yeah because you always look at it like a numbing agent yeah like numbing the pain type of shit yeah. but for the most part it was just causing it more to be honest because it makes you don't i mean I, it made me not care mm -hmm. now i care about shit you know mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. do you feel like you in your life right now are you are, are you is has every year gotten better Fuck no. <laughs> it really got a lot worse for me, you know. I was just me, you know, caught up in my addictions and everything. But mm -hmm. ever since I've been sober and everything, everything's been going great, to be mm -hmm. honest. I mean, I never I always, like I say, I always thought it was like me ha using it as an escape. But now it's like everything's just been great, man. I, I have no complaints right now. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. What do you, is there anything that you've like been doing lately in in sober life that you feel like you just didn't have time for before yeah i mean now i feel like i have too much time on my hands and i'd be like what what the fuck did i used to be doing all this time i was getting fucked up but mm -hmm. now <laughs> now i've just been working back just being in the studio making music again it's it's just started to become fun for me again you know before it just felt like work after a while like yeah. i would be getting so fucked up and shit and having to be in the studio and i didn't really like that shit like mm -hmm. i would really I don't, I don't know i just didn't like it to be honest it got it got to a point where you know i just didn't really want to be in the studio but now it's just like i'm having so much fun with it i'm having fun it's like because you know i guess when you become you know like when you start making money from it and then and it, as a kid it was a hobby like your hobby becomes your job yeah it's like oh fuck yeah you know now it's back again it's starting to feel like a hobby again so i've just been really just making music man for the most part do you feel like you're you're, you're even still now having to balance the whole thing of like trying to do what will be you know in your mind like financially and commercially successful versus like what you in your heart want to do or are you pretty set on like i've gotten to the point where i want to be with all that other stuff let me just do what's in 
what's in my own brain i think when you start thinking like that it fucks with you creatively for sure you know so you know it gets to the point you just got to do it for the love and anything else that comes from it that's a blessing Mm -hmm. so i always kind of went into making my music with that thought process so it never really was about if you listen to my music you obviously know i'm not fucking trying to make a top 40 hit or no shit like that but you know i guess um i don't know man I, i just really just just tapped in to like I don't know, just like a creative source. Like I said, it's almost like a flow state now. Like mm-hmm. I'm not trying hard to do this shit mm-hmm. and I'll be just making crazy shit. But for the most part, I just really just being creative and shit. It's just like when you when you're doing it out of the love, I think that's when a lot of people gravitate towards it more. It's almost like a creative energy or some type of shit. I can't even it's hard to Did explain. You, when you were like when you think about like the times where you just were dreading being in the studio the most, like did you ever have a time where you just thought you would you would like never get it back you know talking about making music yeah i mean it's the love that you had for it i mean it's fairly easy for me to be honest because i've been doing it for so long but um i think that was just me being wanting to be fucked up it started out Mm -hmm. as me getting fucked up because i thought it sparked my creative juices yeah then at the at the point of like why am i here i'd rather just get fucked up you know what i'm saying yeah yeah (laughs) but no it's just like you know without all that it, it was just a distraction to be honest Hmm. Well, okay. I mean, looking back on it, do, is there any part of it where you're like, you know what, that night out actually did kind like even kind of do something for this song? Like it gave me this idea or this rhythm or something, or was it all just no an excuse? <laughs> it was all just excuses. Okay. It was none of it. None of it. No. Hmm. I think now it's just like, um, because even got to the point where it was like, I would just dread it. Like, ah, oh, yeah. got to go to work. Yeah, I looked at it like work and stopped being yeah. fun. And I was just like, since I've not been looking at it like that and just been having fun with it again, it's just like it comes to me so easy now. Before I'd be like wrecking my brain, trying to make some dope shit or even just the point of doing that, like mm-hmm. trying to make something dope. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, just get in there and do it and everything else to take care of itself. So what was the what was the spark for you to be like, you know, after so long for you to be like, all right, I'm going to I'm going to get clean and like kind of enter this new phase of life um i mean it was something that i always wanted to do i feel like i mean i knew i was fucking up but i guess you know as men sometimes it's hard to ask for help Mm. you know and i didn't even know how to go about doing that you know so once i just got fed up like you know just ruining relationships and you know having them waking up every morning like you know after getting blacked out drunk and people telling you shit you did and you're like fuck i did that Mm. you know and just so many embarrassments and shit like that and just getting tired of that shit and just being fed up and then just you know i guess when you feel like you at rock bottom like you know i was just felt like i was there emotionally where i was just tired of putting myself through that kind of turmoil you know what i'm saying where i was Mm -hmm. like shit gotta change man you know what are you looking forward to in the future in the future yeah um i think um before i used to when i used to go on the road and i would do shows and shit it was almost like i was more concerned with the after party than the actual show yeah yeah and now you know after i just did this tour with peggy being on stage started to become like um therapy for me Mm. like it made me happy like i used Mm. to be so nervous to go on stage and i would get fucked up just because i felt like it would make me you know feel better and not be you know just everybody get nervous you know being in front of a lot of people i guess but now it's like i was excited to get on stage and that became like a form of therapy for me so i think for the most part just being back on stage has caused me so much clarity to see people that really enjoy the music for Mm -hmm. what it is you know so that just made me feel so good doing this last tour so i'm just more excited to just get back out and playing music for the people that enjoy it we were talking uh beforehand about like that the adrenaline Mm -hmm. after you do a show i've been doing all these uh uh shows this year doing the the podcast live and and after each show i also feel like like i can't just fucking go to sleep yeah you know no, like yeah, I, even definitely. if i even i'll even just like take a long walk or something like and you know now that you you said you're not going out as much like what do you what do you do with that and how what have you been doing with that energy yeah after the shows um because yeah after after a show i do have like a crazy like adrenaline rush and i'm like pumped up and it was really hard the first couple shows we did where I didn't know, you know, like, damn, because I used to drink or, you know, smoke and do other shit, you know. But now it's like um, I start to find, like, um, 
solace and like just going back to the hotel room by myself and yeah playing my steam deck or yeah. reading a book and just like you know watching random shit on youtube you know it just started i just started to be comfortable in that element you know and then i brought my um equipment with me so i would like set up in hotel rooms and just work on music so it'd be like you know i wake up in the morning you know get my coffee you know everything and just work on some music then before i knew what i gotta go to sound check go to sound check come back do some do a little more shit so i just got caught up in it was like 24 hour work Mm -hmm. where i didn't i wasn't even thinking about nothing else Mm -hmm. you know well there's also like the the social element of going out Mm -hmm. you know like does it does it ever do you you ever get like lonely afterwards like after you're just sitting and playing the steam deck or does it feel good yeah being on the road is lonely yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't say that but i think um for the most part man i just i don't know I, i had a lot of time to be with myself you know, when I'm at the crib, I'm with my girl, with my dogs, you know, it's a lot of stuff going on, you know, dealing with my family, my friends, you know, and for the most, I haven't been on the road for a while. So being back, it was like, I was just happy being back at work. Like, oh, it almost kind of sparked something like, I, I remember why I love doing this, mm. you know? Mm. Mm. Yeah, it almost feels like when you're, uh, when, when you're just kind of going back home and like, going back into your routine of what you of what you would be doing when you weren't on the road like watching youtube videos mm-hmm. or reading or something like that it feels like you know the days are less uh you're you're less engulfed in fucking chaos yeah you know it's like becomes a part of your routine yeah I, but I, I would say that being on the road it's hard to like live healthy in some sense oh fuck yeah you know like you got to eat bullshit where you can eat it so i, I have enjoyed being back at home to be able to be able to eat the way I want to eat and live the way I want to live and sleep in my own bed for the most part, you know? What's the worst, like, things that you're eating on the on the road? I mean, fast food, you know? Sometimes yeah. you got to, you know, certain cities you go in, they shut down early. It do, you ain't really... fa- do you have a favorite one of those? I've just eaten a lot of chicken. You know, I'm black. <laughs> uh-huh. So I was just we were We were just everywhere. at Seven Eleven, and I had, the, what was it, the Lone Star? Do we, I had oh a Lone God, Star slider. Oh, God. Dude, it was... It wasn't that bad. It wasn't. Yeah, I mean, uh, I might have to. I might have to fucking shove all these tables away to do diarrhea halfway uh, through this. But yeah, eating out the Seven Eleven is gnarly. That's definitely some gnarly. That takes me back to like being a teenager or some shit, man. No, I can't do that no more. Hmm. Hey, man, you want to take a phone call at sure. all? Sure. Let's do it. Let's see what we got on the phones. Hello, Stephanie. Hello? Stephine. Hi. Is it Stephanie or um, Stephine? Uh, you can call me whatever you want, but it's Stephanie. Okay, then I'll then I'll call you Stephine. All right. What's going on, um, Stephine? Life busy. Um, I work my two jobs, so that's pretty fun. <laughs> well, you said here that uh, your your boyfriend is choosing Roblox over your guys' relationship. Yeah, I'm trying to um understand why he does that because to me that's like a child's game and i don't know why he's choosing a child's game over um our relationship (laughs) um so i've been dating him for a year and it's been pretty good until he started his little roblox addiction and uh, i managed to make an account because um i was like okay we could spend more time with each other if i get this game and He's kind of like choosing to play that game all day till like 4 a.m. rather than hang out with me. And it's always this one game, which I came to realize it's like this donation game. So, do you know how Roblox works? I do you know how Roblox works? No, I'm I'm grown. I'm 40 <laughs> years old. Okay, well, <laughs> you get like these Robux with like actual money, and I wanted to support his little gaming edition. Um, so I bought him a couple gift cards. And I guess I realized that donation game, he donates all the gift cards I give to him to random people. And that's like the only game he plays on there. And it's really, um, I'm trying to figure out why he enjoys doing that rather than like hanging out with me. And How just old realizing is your boyfriend? he's like using my money. 19. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah. It seems like an EDP situation going on here. What does EDP stand for? Fist pump, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I joined them one time and there's just like a bunch of kids 
running to him or not kids i don't know how old they are but like they sound young definitely asking kids. for money I, you, I yeah. guess the, I, what I understand is if is you want him to stop playing the and you're I get I guess you're trying to be a a supportive girlfriend but if you want him to stop playing the game, why are you buying him gift cards for the game? Well, because I just I don't know I, I'm I really um, provide for him I don't know uh, whatever he wants I, I tend to give it to him because you know I, I like to make him happy but it's kind of like a slap to the face I give him like. Maybe a forty dollar gift card, and then he just like ignores me. <laughs> hmm. And I feel like I'm kind of too old to be going through this cycle over and over again. What do you do? What do you do outside of your relationship? Do you have a uh, dreams and aspirations outside of this Roblox man? Um. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I just work my two jobs. Um, come home, hang out with my boyfriend. That's that's all I do. I don't really. Does he have, have a any job? Dreams. Yeah, he he works. Um, he works maybe two t- two days a week, oh. and he's in school right now. He's in college right now. That's pretty weird. He just so. makes it rain on kids and Roblox. With my money, I guess. I. <laughs> Where did you meet? I don't know. This guy? I've been trying to get. It. Um. So we're actually long distance. We. Uh, we met off a game called VR Chat, and I think someone <laughs> talked about it in um on your channel before. Do you know VR Chat? Yeah, I do know what VR Chat is. Who? Who? I want to know what uh what was his avatar in VR Chat? He wasn't. He was like a meme avatar. We we're both in meme avatars, so we're like goofing around, and I started talking to him. And okay. to be honest, it's been pretty healthy besides this Roblox phase. Because before him, I was dating someone for seven years, and you know he didn't really treat me well. And then I started dating this man right here. So it just—it just—I don't know. <laughs> well, you—you you met your boyfriend in a digital realm, knowing that he spends a lot of time in digital realms, and he continues to spend lots of time in digital realms. Um, yeah. And you and you but you made an account to try to uh, play it with him, right? Yeah, and I really don't understand the game because it's like too kiddish for me, and I just I can't really enjoy it. I kind of yeah, thought it for like uh, maybe for he would like. Yeah, <laughs> Some, <I'm sorry? laughs> it would be a red flag for you for somebody. Uh, yeah, uh, it's just a little creepy. It give me creepy vibes, man. Like it, you like kids or something. Yeah, um, I don't think he would ever cheat, but it's just like it's. <laughs> I don't know if the I don't know if the sorry, fact is, that that would be cheating is the problem. <laughs> Yeah, I know he uses to socialize, but I would rather him like socialize on, I guess, VR chat because it's more aimed for adults, and I would kind of understand it in that way. <laughs> does he have like a bu- does he have like a bunch of like f- friends on Discord who are like kids and shit? No, um, they I would consider eighteen still kind of like a kid, honestly. So they're kind of eighteen, um, twenty. So his age range, but it's just. They act really childish, so I just. How old are you? I'm mentally not mature. I'm 22. Oh. Hmm. It's a little creepy, man. A little creepy. Me? My age? (laughs) No, not you, him. I just wouldn't want to be spending my time all day when I got me a hot older woman sitting around playing Roblox all day. That's just a little creepy. The thing is, I work, um, like, 13 hour shifts for one of my jobs and I would like to kind of like uh, what is the word decompress and hang out with him maybe watch something but he chooses to um, go on the Roblox and like play games all night so I feel kind of ignored and I'm kind of like, too drained to fight it anymore let, let me ask, let me ask you that, just like, did you bef- like before calling us did you have a sit down with mm-hmm. him where you told him that he's spending too much time with Roblox children <laughs> um well if i'm being honest um i try to talk to him like hey i was pretty depressed today and i kind of mentioned it to you i wish we could like watch something and hang out and he kind of like gave me half-ass replies and continued playing his little roblox so i try to mention I, it i think so- i think sometimes you gotta just like like you gotta give a direct response 
of like, hey, you are spending too much time. I feel like. Oh, no, I've, I've, I've had multiple times. That's the thing. So it's just mm-hmm. like when you repeat yourself too much, it's just I, I don't even want to say it anymore. That's why I'm kind of like draining myself with hours from both of my jobs. So. Mm. I mean, it sounds like to me if he met you on VR chat, he might got a Robox relationship. He might got a little Robox bitch or something going on. Mm. I wouldn't doubt that. I'm not trying to be a hater, though. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. I know he doesn't. It's just the fact he enjoys hanging out with, I don't know, children, I guess. I don't know. That's kind of worse than having a Roblox girlfriend. I think he got a Roblox bitch. I think they're equal, (laughs) if I'm being honest. That'd be crazy if he had a Roblox girlfriend and he was donating to her using gift card money. With my money. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know this guy. I don't want to put anything on him like that he but digital um, pimping that's what that is <laughs> digital pimping out here well uh, let me okay actually here's, here's uh you guys are long distance right so you can't even mm-hmm. you you almost ha- like are spending time in these digital realms because that's the only way you can spend time where where how far is the distance yeah, um um he's uh actually like people like um who know him watch this but that's, that's fine he's in canada and i'm in texas but um my parents offered because they really like my boyfriend they offered to buy a plane ticket for one of us to see each other um this upcoming summer so we have plans to meet and stuff but the way he's acting just makes me very unsure about it being successful because he's choosing a literal child game rather than focusing on a relationship this is crazy um i think (laughs) you probably need to find a new boyfriend (laughs) Oh, I'm trying my best to like really give him as much chances as I can because I do love him the best and I'm the type of person who always puts them before I do, like myself. Mm. You're the type of person you put you put the person you're now. with before yourself. Yeah, of course. Before uh, b- before we go, I want to ask you, what's your name again? Stephanie. Stephanie. Um, my name is Stephanie. 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 If you were to put yourself, if you were to put yourself first. What would that look like for you? Um, well, I would honestly keep doing the same things I'm doing, working more hours so I could afford to move out and provide for myself and just not date for a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm lost. I'm kind of lost stop. in life as well, so. Hmm. Hmm. Well, if you ever want to uh, use use me as a VR avatar, you can have <laughs> the rights to my gecko intellectual property and use that to. I would love that. <laughs> find as many romantic partners as that would bring on. Oh no, I would I would pimp with that avatar. <laughs> um, Danny, do you have any final thoughts for Stephanie at all? Yeah. Um need to find you a real person man <laughs> <laughs> it's hard it's hard doing the long distance yeah. thing. Man, like that's just no, I, I enjoy long distance because i feel much safer because my seven year relationship he was very um i guess abusive and stuff so you know he can't really hit me through the internet <laughs> oh man i'm well, sorry to hear that i'm sorry to hear yeah. that stephanie although this guy josh uh, it's, it's <laughs> he doesn't seem like that physically imposing of a man I mean, 19 years old on Roblox, 18 hours a day. Hell no. <laughs> uh, Stephanie, I hope this yeah. was. Uh, I hope this was in some way, shape, or form helpful I can't for help you. you. I don't know. <laughs> That's I, okay. I, I mean, okay. it's nice to talk to someone about it. <laughs> um, dude, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, uh, don't let your boyfriend play Roblox. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Have a good night, Stephanie. You have a nice one. Bye bye. That's weird. I thought Roblox was like for like people like I don't know, like twelve or some shit. I think it is. I think this guy is probably like when he said well, don't I don't know what he she meant by a donation game. Mm-hmm. Or if it's like I mean you can like donate to Twitch streamers or something like that. But I don't I don't know. I mean even even the guys who are like streaming that are like fifteen or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like it's kinda creepy. Yeah. It's kind of creepy. You'll get a little PDF file vibes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you, do, what What do you play on the Steam Deck? Um, well, I've been playing The Witcher. 
because I never finished it. I was playing a lot of The Witcher. But for the most part, I'm, um, you know, I play a lot of JRPGs. Okay. Yeah, so. I'm, what what uh, what one are you playing now? There's a 2% chance I'll. Well, I went back and I was playing Persona 4. So, <laughs> Persona 4, I'm, a, I'm getting into Starfield. I'm going to mm. start playing that tonight. You ever play the, the Switch? The Nintendo Switch? Yeah. Yeah, I, I lost a few of them. You lost a you lost a few <laughs> switches. <laughs> lost a few switches. Where did you? I mean, I guess if you knew, you wouldn't. It wouldn't be lost. But Just leaving them in hotel rooms. Yeah. One time I left a switch in a hotel room. Next thing I know, I got a new one, and they bought like four new games. I'm like, what the fuck? I ain't buy no Mario Party. What the fuck going on? <laughs> oh, they they were in your account and they yeah. bought the games. Yeah. I'm like I yeah. ain't buy Mario Party. Who got this? So yeah, but no, I don't have a switch now. I've been like ever since I got the Steam. Steam Deck's amazing. I got the emulator on it. Got a whole bunch of um, GameCube games. I've been back playing um, GameCube. Yeah, what GameCube games? Metroid Prime. Okay, and that's what I've been getting busy with. Okay, you know? uh, I'm a be- I'm a huge. I used to play like in tournaments for uh, Super Smash Brothers oh, Melee. Yeah. I suck at Smash. I mean, I think um I was better on it. What was it? Sixty four. Smash sixty four. No, no. I think it was GameCube. Yeah, I think GameCube was the my favorite one. Yeah. yeah. You ever play the new one? Yeah, I suck. I suck. I the the I'm like kind of a purist about it. Like the new one, it controls a little bit differently than the GameCube one. Mm-hmm. So I'll only play the GameCube one. It's just people are so good at it, man. Yeah, it's the learning like, curve it's, is it's tough. It's one of those games. It's just like, man, you you can have fun playing it, but then when you play someone that's just fucking mm-hmm. amazing at it, like I don't want to play this shit no more. Mm-hmm. Why am I putting myself through this? Mm-hmm. It's not fun. No, it's not fun at all. Then I was trying to be cool and play with Lil Mac and shit because he was a new character at the time. Mm-hmm. And fuck, it just fucking sucks. Little Mac, so you ever side B off the stage? Mm-hmm. Yeah, always falling off the fucking stage with Little Mac. Let's trying see. to do that fucking dash punch and just fall right off the fucking world. That was pretty good with Kirby though back in the day. That was my guy. Yeah, you ever use, use that down B move? You already know it. You already know what's yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> So let's talk to let's talk to MJ. Hello. Oh, hello. Hey, what's up, man? Oh my God, is this Lyle? Yeah, it's Lyle and Danny. What's up, man? What's up, bro? I'm 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 actually shaking. I'm oh my God, Lyle, you have no idea like how big of a fan I am. Truly, oh, thanks, dude. I worked all summer. And the only thing that got me through the first five hours of like my ten hour shifts were you, bro. Oh, I'm being one hundred percent for real. Thanks, man. Yeah. Can you say something uh, nice about Danny too? I'm not <laughs> you don't uh, have to. Danny <laughs> Danny, you look great in the suit. I'm being serious. Thank I actually was just checking out your music right now. I actually might start listening to you more for real. Like you have some oh. pretty good music, man. <laughs> <laughs> that warms my heart. <laughs> Uh, what's yeah, up, Andrew? No, I'm, how's, being, uh, I'm being serious. Like, thank you. How's how's it going, man? What's what's going on with you? It says that um, you're 19 from Chicago. You're in college, and you're like finding it hard to to talk to your peers. It says, is that accurate? Yeah. Um, Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah. So I've been in school right now for about three weeks, um, and I've only been able to talk to one person in my class and he's a pretty cool dude um and the only way i've learned how to talk to him is i offered him like a piece of gum like every single class period that i had with him i was like do you want a piece of gum or anything and he's, he's really cool i mean he reminds me a lot of my older brother so it just kind of feels like i'm talking to him but other than that i am just really like i'm not diagnosed at all with like social anxiety but it's a, i find it really hard to like talk to people and like even if i'm like in a store or whatever i have to have like my brother like my sibling hype me up to talk to like an employee to ask like do you know where this is so Mm -hmm. um it's just it's kind of hard to like get myself out there and like just talk to people Mm. i dealt with that a lot but I had fucked up teeth. <laughs> so I just didn't want people to see my teeth. So I didn't used to talk a lot when I was younger because they always teased me and shit. But for the most part, I, I realized that um, it's almost just like putting yourself in a situation and you're just being cool enough and people just like want to kick it with you. Like when you seem interesting, you know what I'm saying? Type shit where, you know, not trying too hard, not being a try hard and not trying to go out because then that comes off kind of creepy. 
But I feel like just, you know, you got to just go with the flow and not live in your head. And, it, and eventually people would just pop up. That's how I feel. I feel like there's almost, uh, you have to like get comfortable with yourself. Yeah. First, because if you're, if you think that you're awkward and suck, then everyone else is going to kind of, kind of catch on to that. So you have to kind of like build that internal confidence and, and weirdly it always kind of shows in a way. I mean, how do you, how do you feel about yourself, MJ? Um, I'm, man, I'm not that confident. I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. Uh, I kind of struggle with a lot of, uh, body positivity and just my looks and everything. I try to take care of myself as much as possible, but, um, it's hard, you know, and I just, I got a new haircut, like something that I never did. I got like those like modern mullets now, but, um, <laughs> how tall are you? I'm just, um, I'm five, eight, five, eight. So I'm, okay. I'm like pretty short. Yeah. You taller than me. Um, how tall are you? Five six. Oh, oh, you're like my brother. Yeah. My little brother's taller than me, and I kind of look to him more as like, kind of like trying to be like him because he's in high school and everything, and he just does not care about what other people think or say. He's mm. the chillest person ever. He don't really talk. He has like a group of friends that he usually hangs out with, like online and in school, and he's just like, man don't think like you're too much or like he always would tell me dude you're cringy dude you're embarrassing and everything so it kind of it either messes with me or i'm like man i'm doing so much i gotta like calm down so so danny you said that you you've kind of felt like you know earlier on you had a little bit of what he's talking about but i mean mm -hmm. now you you kind of seem like you have a bit of a you know not giving a fuck what people think about me mentality. Yeah, think what, do you, what do you think changed for you in that because I, I mean like it's all about what you're kind of into and i think most of my friends when i when i was in school and stuff it all came from music so mm -hmm. it's like i was super into like rap and all that stuff and you know i used to rap and stuff so i met all my friends through doing that so i think it's pretty much about like what you're into and that's where your friend group will come from and that type so what are you into um right now i'm actually majoring within graphic design and like art and stuff so i try to like talk to people about like you know, oh, like, this looks cool, or, like, I, I like a lot of music, so I'll be like, who's your favorite artist and everything? Like, I, I don't really listen to, like, pop music, because it's just kind of, like, I don't mean to sound, like, that pretentious, like, oh, pop's, like, mm. gross or whatever. It's, but it's not for me. I think I think there's, there is this thing of, like, creating your own universe that surrounds what you're interested in, and then if you take mm -hmm. the initiative to do that, other people catch on. Yeah. And that's a good way to make friends. Yeah. Like when I we were just talking about uh you know Smash Bros. When I was in college, I would like put on tournaments and, and events and stuff. And it's like when you when you create your own thing around your own interests and invite other people to join it, it's a great way to make friends. So if you're in graphic design and you wanted to start like I don't know, man. You ever you ever, you think about any clubs starting a little graphic design club, a little uh what's the thing where like you show off the the a crit start a little crit club, you know everyone brings their work, and you guys kind of go around that talk would about be it. yeah something like that. Especially if you just started college and there's all these like other you know uh, I I always I always found that starting a club or something like that is a great way to get people around you you know and also you you feel more confident when it's your space yeah you know? i also think he's he seems pretty cool to me like he called and talked mm -hmm. to us so mm -hmm. i really just think it's just him living in his head mm -hmm. that's what we go back and think about like you mm -hmm. know you're just thinking too hard man just you know just go with the flow man that's really you know you in that's what, you're putting yourself yeah. in the situation of being a part of like graphic design you're around a lot of other people that are into the same things that you are so eventually you know let time let, let, let time let nature take its course you know if you think too hard about and it, I, then, I appreciate that. You know, yeah. And school just started, um, right? Especially, yeah. Especially like my little brother and everything, because like we're like not too far. He's like little, like five years younger than me, so like he's like fifteen. Um, and he actually did try to call in once, and he got shut down because he's fifteen. And then I was like, oh dang, I didn't know. Like you had to be fifteen to call off. 
So he was upset about that, but it's all good. Um, well, it was nice of him to, to me, like, take like, a, a break from hanging out with the previous caller's boyfriend to <laughs> call into the show. Yeah. Ah, man. I don't know what was going on with that. I heard like a little bit, like a snippet of like Roblox and stuff like that. And I can relate because my older brother, he plays Roblox. But he's listen, always, listen, like... you, you, you and that guy, are, <laughs> if, if any, if you can leave this with anything, you and that guy are both 19 and you sound like you're doing a lot better socially than he is. So you have that going for you. Okay. Man, I appreciate um, that. Truly. Of course. Danny, is there anything you want to say to MJ before we go? Yeah, man. It's just, um. I think a lot of times, you know, you just got to work on yourself. Like, confidence is everything. Like, you know, you got the new cool haircut, you know, maybe, you know, get some new clothes and, you know, just work on yourself. Maybe going to the gym, working out. Once you feel better about yourself, then everybody will notice that and everything will just happen for you, man. But if you keep living in your head and feeling like you're cringy, then, of course, it's going to project to other people. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that. I actually did start going to the gym uh, this last week because, um, I just look up to my little brother so much because like he's just such a like a calm like cool dude and he started going to the gym with his friends so i was like all right let me hop on and my dad was like all right if you guys want to go i'll pay for you guys to tag on with him and we did and now i'm going to the gym and i think like this week i've lost like maybe like five six pounds hey congrats yeah, that's great man. that's great congrats. So I'm like, yeah so I'm, I'm gonna try to keep on that i'm cooking some food right now some tilapia you know so it's gonna be good tonight well, that's right. Enjoy your lapia. I don't know what that is, but you said tilapia. That's fish. Oh, right? oh sorry. It's like it's, it's, it's fish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, enjoy your tilapia, and uh, thanks for calling, man. Good luck. Thank you, Gig. Oh, and I I missed your Chicago show. I found out that you existed. Like I'll be back after. 2024 i'm coming back to chicago i'm gonna try to come i I heard i heard i heard i'm gonna go i'm gonna go in 2024 i swear i swear you coming to chicago soon too Uh, not that i know about yeah (laughs) go see danny when he comes to chicago too all right take care mj all right thank you sir so i i asked you earlier i was like do do you feel like this era of your life is like the best it's been and you said fuck no but to phrase it differently do you kind of to what we were just talking about do you feel like over the years, how's your personal confidence in yourself been? Is that at the highest it's been, or I wouldn't say it's at the highest because I'm always I wouldn't I've always had like you know pretty confident in myself in some sense, but I think I'm just uh, not causing any problems for myself. Hmm. I think that's the the biggest deal. But like I say, man, I'm so get caught up in my own head as well, and every it's stuff just been going so good that I get that anxiety of. Like, ah, oh, something's going to happen soon or whatever, you know. But I would say, man, yeah, I was causing all the problems for myself thinking I was making things better. Mm. Now at this point in my life, I'm realizing, you know, what the problems were. And the problems wasn't necessarily, um, it was just me. And once you understand, like, having that unresolved trauma and stuff and you letting go of that, I think that was the biggest takeaway from me going to rehab. Mm. It's just realizing where everything stemmed from. And once you're able to find the root of the problem, you're able to take care of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you, what do you feel like the root of the problem was? Um, a lot of guilt, probably a lot of guilt. And then not, not forgiving a lot of people. Like I Mm -hmm. can be like vengeful in some sense, you know? Mm -hmm. And once you're just able to be like, you know, look at it through the other person's eyes, you know, I was able to overcome that. I feel like, you know, a lot of times, man, like even just with, you know, people with their parents or family members or stuff like that. And once you're able to just, you know, feel apologetic on their end, mm. then you can, you know, get through it a lot better. You know, Do you, were you holding on to grudges that yeah. were like several years? Definitely. Yeah, that's really what was the big deal. Did you did you like did you forgive in a sense of like let me call this person up or just an internal internally mm-hmm. i still i still struggle with that mm-hmm. with, with um i don't know with just calling people like having that drama you know like yeah. i don't know i still i still struggle with that but uh, i've gotten a lot better with it i've gotten a lot better with it which with, especially with um expressing myself because sometimes you know stuff cannot go your way and you can feel a certain way about certain things and instead of addressing the issue you just hold it in Mm -hmm. and i think that was a that was a big that was a big deal with me that caused a lot of problems with me now i just you know 
be open about how I feel about stuff. And you you realize sometimes, man, like like people don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> and you yeah, realize, yeah, yeah. like you be like, man, you know, you might think something happened, and and you know, you you try to think from their point of view. And then once you really just sit down and talk to them, you're like, they didn't really care that much. You know, it wasn't even that big of a deal that I was making I it out to be, yeah. you know? Yeah. Do you, do you like when you, when you think of those like multi-year grudges that mm-hmm. you're talking about, do you feel like, oh, I'm holding on to this thing for several years and this person just probably doesn't even, hasn't thought about it Yeah. since and that's it happened. Really, that's, that's really what it is. When right. you really get down and you talk to people, you're like, man, I didn't even know you were feeling like that about that. I'm right. you know what I'm saying? And you're right. like, ah, oh, fuck. And you feel stupid. And that was a big deal with me. It's such a weird thing how like our brains can take certain things and just mess them out of proportion in terms of what's reality, you know. And we also like you can assume how other people feel mm-hmm. all the time, and you can assume another person's mad at you or upset about this or this and that when they just don't get you just projecting stuff onto them. Yeah, and another thing with me was when I know I was wrong in a situation. Yeah, and. From me being wrong, it'll make me hate the other person eventually. Mm-hmm. Like, no, you know, it's easier to hate someone when you know you was wrong mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And just manning up and just accept the responsibility for it. You know, mm-hmm. self-accountability. That was really the biggest thing for me was just, you know, being being accountable for all the fucked up shit that I did. You know, mm-hmm. and I was able to get over a lot of things once I realized I was the fucking bad guy. Mm-hmm. Did you... Like, so I know you said you, it was kind of a lot of internal forgiveness towards the people who you felt like wronged you. Did you make any calls or do any reach outs of, of people you felt like, oh, you kind of fucked up there or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Did that feel, yeah. did that feel cathartic? Because it feels like a weight off your shoulders. Yeah. You know, you holding all this, you know, internal trauma and stuff like that over fucked up shit that you did, you know? So for me, yeah, it definitely lifted like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. Mm, mm. Do you so? You're working on new music now, right? Always now. It's my, it's my, that's my sweet spot. Are right you take? Now. Are you taking a lot of this? A lot this stuff. And correct me if I'm I'm wrong, but it feels like a lot of the stuff that you're talking about is like fresh for mm-hmm. you since rehab. And and I know you you haven't dropped a, a an album yeah. since. Or do you feel like a lot of these things that you're thinking about and these themes and whatnot? Are you, you going to try to kind of express that? I got an album coming out soon, but I think for the most part, with a lot of my music, it was almost like trauma dumping, Mm. you know, where I would talk about shit in my music that I was afraid to talk to other people about, you know? Mm -hmm. And now it's like, you know, as much as it was an artistic expression, it almost was like a cry for help, Mm. too. And, you know, listening to that music is great. And, you know, but I put a lot of comedy in my music, so that was the way I masked it almost like a dramedy mm-hmm. type of situation mm-hmm. but now it's almost like i will and it and it did because I, I do get a lot of messages from people be like you know some of my fuck, most fucked up songs they be like man that helped me get through my shit <laughs> yeah yeah you yeah. know it's almost yeah. like a weird thing but now it's like um i just kind of want to make people happy with my music i don't mm-hmm. want them to feel sad or feel some feel worried about me type of shit you know so it's like because i realized you know a lot of the music that i liked growing up as a kid was the type of songs that just made me no matter what i was going through in my life i can listen to this song and just takes me to a happy place mm. I'm not saying i'm about to be making some old corny ass fucking you know what i'm saying Do happy you, pop music yeah. type shit but just still i want to make people feel good or give them that confidence or just make them just forget all their problems for that three minutes and just dance you know do you ever have uh, a song that you just like had it, you had no intention of it being a song like that that would like help people in that way and it's just something you just were i don't know wanted it to be hype or something yeah, like that I mean, and then it was interpreted in ways mm-hmm. that you didn't think it would be interpreted i mean just like my um, my album atrocity exhibition that was pretty much i was i mean i was really just um in a dark place but i, I find that a lot of people you know that love that album or, or, talk, or hit me up and talk it was like man it helped them realize they were going through a lot and you know got them out of their funk you mm-hmm. know so maybe i don't know i guess sometimes you know, people have this whole perception of what artists, you know, we're normal people, too. We go through shit, too. So I guess people here are like, oh, he having these same problems and these troubles, you know. So it's just so I'm, I'm at such a great space to see people, you know, let them know that I made it out. So instead of doing all this trauma dumping, I'm more so want to help. You know, mm-hmm. that's what I always tell anybody. If you're going through something, man, you want to reach out to me, man, I'm definitely will answer, you know. Trauma dumping 
though, like when you're when you're being open, it is it is helpful for people because people are like, oh man, Danny Brown's this fucking cool rapper guy. He's probably like just you know uh, uh, having sex with models and doing all this. But you know, and then for you to you know talk openly about things that you're struggling with, people are like, oh. And then there's people who are like dreaming. They're like, oh, well, once I'm like you know, famous and successful and whatever the fuck, then I'm never going to have any problems ever again. And then yeah. when they hear people who are successful talk about problems they have, they're like, oh, maybe it's not these external things that I have to achieve to reach, but it's it's something, you know, more more internal. Uh, yeah, I, like I said, I would cause a lot of the problems myself, but every time I would, like, make an album, like, even now, like, you know, having an album, getting ready to come out, I would just get this crazy anxiety like i would just be so afraid it was almost like because you know once you're trying to get on you know it's like joy like you're just happy any little thing that happened but once you kind of feel like you made it in some sense it feels like anything can take it away right and you don't want to lose that like one right I make one trash album i'm done I'm, right and i used to just be so scared like having the album get ready to come out and be like oh man just people gonna think it sucks my career is about to be over mm -hmm. maybe i shouldn't have made that maybe mm -hmm. i should make some more songs and and stuff like that but now it's like i'm just in a happy place even though this album is a complete trauma dump. Mm. <laughs> but for me man a lot of my favorite albums mm. were, were musicians trauma dumping so i'm trying to get on this i'm trying to drill into my head this idea that i think i think sucking and being kind of cringy is not that bad it's not that bad if you suck and if everyone thinks you suck because what whatever man and look as long as as long as you don't like uh go to jail mm -hmm. or get grievously injured or die you're you're probably fine yeah. you know so like sucking is just in that if you like i want i want to get my base i want to get my perspective to such a point where I, that's all i care about you know if i woke if i woke up today and everyone online thinks i'm you know uh, cringy but I can like walk and eat food and stare at the sky. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Shit, that's really important because for the most part, music is subjective. Yeah, it's going to be someone that thinks it suck. It's going yeah. to be someone that love it, regardless of what you know. Yeah. So it's like, man, I used to just put myself through a whirlwind of trouble, and then getting fucked up trying to escape, and I think about it, and that just caused more problems. You know. When you're when you're on your like deathbed, what are you going to be thinking about? Um. Why you want to think about my death? <laughs> no, for the most part, I just hope that I've I've accomplished what I had to accomplish on earth. That's really what I think. You know, I want to be able to whatever I was put here for mm -hmm. to do. I just hope I accomplished the mission. If you if you died tomorrow, so would hopefully, you be like, would you be like, we did it? I, I, obviously, I did. If I died, it's pretty good. Yeah. All right, so then you can spend. So then. You know everything. Everything else is just a bonus. You know yeah. you can suck for the rest of your life, and so that's why I feel cheaper. like you know I, I've obviously didn't do what I came here to do yet. Mm -hmm. So you know, but I ain't trying to think about that no time. So I, I spend too much time thinking about immortality. You know, so now I'm just you know instead of thinking about fucking dying all the time, I'm thinking I, about living now. I saw, I saw, I saw. I was, I was doing some research on you before this, and I saw someone wrote a headline about you that said like. Danny Brown. Yeah, is no that was fucking weird. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Danny like, Brown is no is longer they, afraid like, to die. Who, who, like, why would you do that? Like, that's a, that's a, that's a dangerous invitation to it, the universe. I mean, I guess not, nah, man. Twitter paying people for tweets, man. So they doing anything for engagements at this point, you know? Hey, you want to take a phone call? Sure. But yeah, I was pissed off about that. I'm like, what the fuck? Out of all that long ass article, that's what y'all took from that. <laughs> now he has a new album coming soon nothing else he's not scared to die and that really just was me talking about a mushroom trip i had where i saw my grave and i was like oh it's not that bad <laughs> so what the fuck hello hello this is a uh, sam 27 from california how you doing how's life i'm doing all right I'm doing all right uh sam what is it you wanted to talk about today wanted to talk about growing up in the Mormon church as a black man adopted into a white family in the California suburbs. Ah. Do you know anything about Mormonism? Fuck Dan? no. What, uh... I do, indeed. Well, I was, I was asking, I, I used, you, I assume, know a lot about Mormonism, unless if you weren't paying attention while they were teaching you about it. 
Uh, how long were you in were you in the church for? <laughs> yeah, I was in it till I was fifteen. I got taken out of the home when I was around that age, and but yeah, I was in it for fifteen years, and my entire except for my mom is out of the religion now. Did were you the first one to leave? No, my older brother was. So mm. my parents pretty much gave him the ultimatum that when you turn 18, you can stay in the house, but there's no drinking, no smoking, no, no, no sex before marriage or anything like that. And you're guaranteed a spot. But if not, then you have to leave. So he's like, fine, I'll join the military. <laughs> so you left and joined the military. Yeah. That sounds, I don't know which one is worse between being in the Mormon church or being in the military. They both sound like a similar think, level of strictness. Yeah, they're both pretty bad, but one of them doesn't really care if you jerk off at night and the other one, you know, does. <laughs> <sighs> Different levels of rigidness, I assume. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Do you, uh, where, where, where are you jerking off at night in the. Is it like in the bathroom or are you just like in the bunk beds jerking off like while you're in the same room as all the other folks? Oh, hell no. That shit is hella shameful. Get it in wherever you can. <laughs> mm. You're hiding that shit. You know, wait for everyone to go home. You know, wait for everyone to leave, whatever. It's crazy. Hella shameful. Shit Danny, any questions so far? I'm I'm at a loss for words. So you left a religion just to jack off? <laughs> Hell yeah! Come on now. This is what they have in our armed forces. China gonna <laughs> fuck us up. No, well, I have have they? We I think what we gotta do is you need to we, you need to somehow weaponize jerking off so that you can use it as some form of accomplish that some form of biochemical you can use your penis as like a biochemical weapon you crazy dog yeah. joining the military yeah. just to jack off i mean you have to i mean that's the only reason to join the military you want to go kill kids in a different country and not be able to jack off uh, you, you got me there <laughs> What do you what do you do now? Are you still in the military? No, 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 no. That was my brother that was in the military. I just I just left. So Yeah. Okay. I'm terrified of this guy. <laughs> I mean, it's the upbringing, man, you know. Are you sure you're black? It left me a little weird. Yeah, yeah, see, that's the thing, though, because even though I was born in the Bronx, when you're adopted by a bunch of, like, white people from the Midwest, you kind of sound white, you feel me? All right, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm. I did some are you, are, time, are you happier now that you're out of the out of the church and out of the military? And now you, oh, yeah. your jacking off is not under monitored, is not being monitored by any organization of any kind. No, no, I get to jack off freely now. It's it's a good life. It's a good life. Are you jacking you off never, while you you're know. on the phone with us right now? What was the question? No, no, that's that's for later. Get out of here! Come on now, that's for later. What do you want us to help you with? Do you like lemons? lemons? Yeah, he asked if he asked if we like lemons. Yeah, I like lemons. I like lemonade. Should I make my friend lemon meringue pie this weekend? If you're not gonna jack off in it, I think he just trolled. No, me. no, no. Just lemons. Just lemons. Man. Do you feel satisfied um, by this phone call, Sam? I'm quite satisfied.
Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Don't jack off into lemon meringue pie. And leave Mormonism if it's bad for you. It's noted. Thanks, Ben. Take care. Man, this is a psycho. That guy was definitely jacking off on the phone. Oh, man. I feel like that's where, like, villain arc start, like. <laughs> yeah and he's got um that is a that is quite a quite an interesting villain arc because he has the traumatic childhood of a villain mm -hmm. and then he's got the weapons training of a villain as well yeah and he just one jack off everywhere yeah he needs to find a girlfriend do you jack off a lot i used to what what changed um not being hung over <laughs> being hung being does being hung over make you want to jerk off a lot? I think so. It did, yeah. Huh. Mm hmm Huh. Um, would you, like, with all that adrenaline after the shows, do you are you a nightly post-show jack jack or offer? No, I wouldn't say not not no. Nah, I wouldn't really. I was kind of sleeping for the most part. Like I say, I work. I get some work in before I know it. I pass out. But mm -hmm. I was I was taking um Valerian root. What's valerian root? This is like some valerian root capsules they say help with um, anxiety. And they really work. They really work good. So I would get off stage. I'd take some valerian root. And I'd be calm. Like it was, you know, mm. I think jacking off is more like a, you know. Stimulant? You, like a, just like, I don't know, something you feel like cures anxiety. Or like you just like nervousness. or Absolutely, yeah. I don't know, yeah. So it was one of those kind of things. Or like you just can't sleep. Yeah. You know, but for the most part, I was getting good sleep on the road. You know. What's this thing called again? Valerian root. Valerian root. Is that, can you buy it at like yeah, a place or do you like have to order it? Just like, you know. Okay. Yeah, it, is, it works. Because I've had a lot of nights where like, uh, I've, I'm just like jacking off like a, like four times in a row or something like yeah. that just to fall asleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. And it's hard in the suit because I have gloves on. Mm-hmm. It probably feels better. It does. Jaden from Wisconsin just had a just had a baby. It wasn't intentional, but he wants to know what our advice would be to young parents. You're you're a parent, right? Yeah. You wanna talk to you wanna talk sure. to Jaden? I mean you gotta be a father to your child. <laughs> That's kinda of simple. Oh man. shit. Jaden, what what's going oh. on? Hey, what's up? How's it going, man? I'm here with Mr. Danny Brown. We're talking to people on the phone. How's life? Pretty good, man. How about, how about, I mean, I guess how about you guys? Seems like you guys are having a pretty good time on there. Yeah, we're great. We're chilling. Fuck yeah. I'm having fun, too. Yeah, that's what's up. Well, I called in about the baby, but then I thought, do you guys know what a cowboy kiss is? No. No? You haven't ever heard? So... I had this boss. Well, I guess you could call him a cowboy, but it's so you know, funny how we, just, we, 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 were, we were talking character. before this, we were talking before uh, uh, going live, and I had asked Dan. I had asked you if uh, you had ever taken phone calls before on your mm -hmm. shows. You said you like used to, but there was too much weird shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the weird shit. This is some of that. Yeah. yeah. So what's a cowboy kiss? So, it's when a grown man, I guess this grown man was about 70 years old, uh, he thinks you're either doing a pretty bad job or a pretty good job. And he, uh, he surprises you with a slap first. And then, he proceeds to lean in and kiss you when you don't, when you don't expect it, man. Don't expect it at all. Baffles you. So you got the cowboy kiss? I got the cowboy kiss, man. So and he you know, slapped the shit it, out of you? Honestly, yeah, dude, he slapped, he slapped me. I'm not going to lie to you. And you didn't hit him back? Oh, I did. I did. I gave him a cowboy kiss back. Oh, okay. This sounds like some form of BDSM. I mean, kind of. I mean, I didn't, I don't know, though, because I didn't like it at first. But you like it now? No, no, no. I, I ended up quitting that job. Not because of the cowboy kiss, but he was he was a crazy <laughs> redneck on PCP, man. That doesn't never really makes it well. PCP at 70 years old? 
Dude, no, in the fucking trees. Big ass bucket mm. truck cutting down them trees. Oh, wow. Okay. Cowboy hat on, bowl of PCP. I'm not even like fucking with you guys or nothing. I like <laughs> I'm so dead ass right now. <laughs> what kind of job was this? Uh, I was a lumberjack. Oh shit. That's some that's some hard work right there. Um how are things going with your child? They're doing great, man. She's pretty cool. She just likes to look around and sleep and poop and yell at me, but that's okay. Um, you called and you said you wanted some advice to a young parent. Yeah. Dan, how old were you when you had your kid? I'm 20. 20? Mm-hmm. Okay. Was that was that difficult for you, or was there any things that you remember kind of being stressed out about or struggling with? Yeah, financially. <laughs> Worried mm-hmm. about how I was going to take care yeah, of the baby. Yeah, for real. So, yeah, that was the biggest deal. But I think when you have a kid that, that young, you just got to realize your life is over. Mm-hmm. It's over, brother. Yeah. Ain't no more party yet, none of that. The party <laughs> is over. No more, none of that. Everything is for the kid now. You no put, more cowboy kisses. No more cowboy kisses, so. It's all about the baby now. I'm so okay. you got to you put know, your, honestly, your whole life is dedicated to taking care of this beautiful life that you brought into the world. Man, I I got my whole I got my whole own crib now. I'm re, I'm remodeling a house because I ended up getting into this farm, which I'm going to be buying, and it'll be pretty cool. But because it, it's like I'm buying it on payments from this old lady. And you got a lot going on for someone stuff. just 18. Man. Yeah, I was I was going to say, man, you're like, you're for buying real? a farm, you're a lumberjack, you're having a kid. I, do you have any advice for me? <laughs> <laughs> um, Keep doing what you're doing, man. I fucking love watching you. Oh, thanks, man. Got my earbuds thanks, in, man. cutting down some trees. Hey, man, you or keep doing cows, what you're doing. Milk I love milk. Oh, and actually, I called you a, a while back as Rob about my cat. And you told me to put him into the jail for a thousand years. And I, I think that was pretty your, good advice. I told you to put your cat in jail? For a thousand years. And look at you now. You're buying a farm. Fuck yeah. The cat gets uh, to come with me, though. I can't lie. What's the, what, uh, what's, how's everything going with the mom? Are you still with her? What's going on with her? Yeah. Yeah, okay. we're doing pretty good. She's at one of her friend's houses. So it's my first night alone with the baby. Mm. This is your first night alone with the baby? And you call it out. <laughs> you know about to say. Uh, you're supposed to be taking care of the baby, man. I'm holding her right now. Okay. I am. I gave her a bottle, actually, right before you guys answered. That was pretty cool. Good job, man. Good job. Yeah. I think you're going to be yeah. fine. Yeah. You, you sound, sound like a great... You sound... You, I wish you were my dad. I will be. <laughs> Send me the adoption paper. That's cool, man. All right. I'm moving. I will, I, I'd love to... Hey man, if you prepare a, a nice bale of hay for me, I'll live in your farm and be your son. I don't mind. I'll I'll give you two bales of hay. How about that? And we'll it's make a like big got round together me. Um Well Jaden. Damn. You actually really do sound like you have you are you I, I, I genuinely you sound like you're gonna be okay. I'm not worried about you at all. Fuck yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, any, any, any other <laughs> final words for Jaden? Um, yeah, man. Just I, like I told him, man. Everything is about the baby now, man. Your life is over. <laughs> man, you sound like Drewski. <laughs> 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 All right, take care, Jaden. You too, man. It was awesome talking to you. Have a good, good night. Talking to you too, man. Well, it's fu- it's funny. I believe the same. Thing, right? Like when you have a kid, your life is pretty much over. Yeah. But that doesn't seem like it was the case for you. You've seen, you've lived a, a full life up until this point. I mean, I wasn't a lumberjack at 18. I was selling crack. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I had um, young parents. You know, my okay, mom yeah. was 18 when she had me. My dad was 16. Mm-hmm. And look how I turned out. So, mm-hmm. hey. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fucked up. But no, man, and my parents, they partied every weekend. Really? Type shit, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, and that was where a lot of my fucking, you know, my lot of, I got into a lot of trouble because of that, you know? Are you still, are, are your parents still around? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Are you, are you still cool with them? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. good. Have you, and like, were you cool with them your whole life? Mm, you know, I guess it's like everything else. It's been, when I was fucking up, 
mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. you know it was always button heads with my mom or but i and me and my dad we got really close so it's just good it's good how are things going with your daughter now she's great she just was out here not too long ago hanging out you know she's 22 now oh cool so she grown what's her like what's she do what's her what's her deal what's she she's into? into like photography and shit oh cool you know she come out here she go thrifting and shit same shit you know mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. now when you, you said you were 20 mm-hmm. when you had her mm-hmm. and you were like hmm and then the main issue was just like financial stuff yeah and then me and her mom went together so just that whole hard part of just being able to see her and being around her and stuff like that but mm-hmm. then you know we eventually worked it out but i mean i like i had a lot of crazy shit like i had my first um well was having my first child at 16 and the mom was um she went nine months and didn't have a miscarriage mm. and the baby died and mm. i struggled with that for a long time didn't mm. really realize how much it affected me because i was like running around in the streets at the time but once i really got older it was like man i was i went through a real something that really shaped my life for the rest you know what i'm yeah, saying for the rest yeah. of my life and it really yeah yeah, just dealing with that in, in high school. That's, you're supposed to be thinking about fucking homework and graduating and shit like that. And I'm running around selling drugs, having babies, you know? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that was really hard. Was there was there like a point in your life or even even now where like you were thinking a lot about things from high school and your early life and, and being like having that realization that they still affect you to this day? Yeah, definitely. I always think about how shit would have turned out if I just would have did the right thing. I mean, I, maybe I wouldn't be here right now. Maybe I wouldn't be mm. making music or anything, you know? Like, I think about that all the time. Like, you know, there's a gift and a curse in some sense, you know? If I would have had a baby at 16, I probably would have been working some bullshit job right now, you mm. know? Mm. I wouldn't have been able to fucking follow my dreams of making music, you know? So it was almost like that's my angel in the sky, like, you know, getting me through life kind of shit you know and at at 20 was it like was it was it an intentional decision to to have a kid no, or was definitely it definitely not <laughs> but i think yeah we was going through the trauma of, of losing that one so yeah mm. it was uh i mean i wouldn't say it was intentional but you know i'm pretty sure oh, so it was so the it was the same girl mm-hmm. at 16 yeah. and 20 yeah okay um do you and and was it like right sort of after you had the kid that, that things started going awry with her? No, it was already, it was like before even any of that happened. It was like, we were already kind of like, you know, you know how you is when you're young. Mm-hmm. I was running around. She was doing her thing too. And it was just, you know, we were still fooling around. And mm-hmm. that just ended up happening. But then we ended up, we was together. We got back together for some years. We was together for a long time. And then I just was a piece of shit, you know? Mm-hmm. I, was, I wasn't really ready for that kind of thing like i wasn't ready for like a i just didn't understand i'm like i say i came from young parents so i didn't even understand what it takes to to have a family Mm -hmm. you know so i just think you know like a lot of fucked up part on me you know still i was still trying to be young too you know it's a wild thing because i i i I feel like is if you if you like have a kid your life is is, it is is over. over it's like it's about the kid but um I don't know. I'm now. I'm thinking about Jaden, and you know, he really did seem like yeah, he, he had it together. It together. See, like me, I was running around, so like even you know, having a kid and trying to sell drugs. Like any mm-hmm. day, the shit could have been over with, and I could have been in jail, mm-hmm. which happened. I went to jail for a year, and that's pretty much how we split up. Mm-hmm. She met somebody else and moved on, you know, type mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. And then you know, I got out. And it's hard to see my daughter and this and that, and just hard to keep that relationship going and. But it did give me a drive to make it in music, though. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a, you know, it was almost like just like I got it. I had nothing else going for me. You know, I dropped out of school, didn't have any education, really. And all I knew how to do was fucking sell drugs at that point to get money. I, I was trying to get like normal jobs and shit and just working like normal jobs. I fucking just couldn't. I'm not like built for labor (laughs) Mm -hmm. but you there's but there's there's something of like you were built to be an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. you know you were built to like make it for yourself but not like you know work but it did give me that drive though yeah i would say because i would like i would take 12 hour greyhound trips to new york with a bag of cds and just trying to network. This is days before like cell phones and shit. I'm going out there without a phone. Were you, were you like doing the thing at like Times Square, like handing out 
CDs and stuff? In the beginning, yeah, but then I had met an A&R that worked at Dev Jam. Mm-hmm. So then I had that connection with him, and then I would talk to him, and I'd come out. I, sometimes I'd just pop up on him and be like, I'm out here. And then he'd let me, like, crash at his crib, and we'd, like, take me around the studios and shit, and that's really how it all started for me. Hmm. And then I just was making music, you know, and, you know, pe- people getting up on my shit and shit, like, just making connections, kind of, you know? And then um, I actually just saw him not too long ago when we were in New York. And then um, ended up going to jail, lost that shit. Then I came, when I got back out, it was this like- This was, this. you had, like, a, kind of, like, a record- Thing mm-hmm. in the process I mean, you know, then... just networking and building with him. And yeah. Then once I, but the you, thing is, you... is, this was like way before like internet shit, kind of. You know. Yeah. So, the main deal would be like, you know, I would go out to New York, and then people are like hit back, like seeing, you know, hit up like people in Detroit, and be like you heard of this kid or this and that, and then nobody knew who I was. Mm-hmm. So it was almost like when I got a just like I got to make my name known in my city. Before mm-hmm. I can take it anywhere else. So mm-hmm. that's what I did. Once I got out of jail, I would like go to open mics and, you know, just make music and put it out. And then the internet thing started taking off, you know, getting my music on blogs and stuff like that. And then everything just kind of came together because I already had like the connections in New York. And then once I got my name up in my city, then everything just like opened up for me. Do you do you ever think about, you know, what you would be doing if, if it wasn't for music or even if even like any other like positive thing you would have you would have sunk your 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 work ethic into honestly i can't i can't think so i don't think so because mm-hmm. um like most of my friends from like back then they are pretty much dead or in jail as cliche as that sounds mm-hmm. and if not then it's just like you know working dead end jobs or you know so i, I don't know man it, it's almost like music was just that's like my last that's like my last thing that i had man are you still friends with uh, anyone from yeah definitely that time? yeah definitely like a lot of my friends you know but I, I feel like i met a lot of my you know newer friends through music mm. like we like i say you know doing the same shit so like a lot of my friends that i have now is like from my music time and not from my street days you know mm. Mm. do you like so your your kind of social life nowadays mm-hmm. do you do you find yourself mainly like trying to hang around other people who are who are sober no, I wouldn't say that because one thing I, they teach you kind of in rehab is that you can't, the the worst thing you can do is try to run from it, mm. you know, you have to be able to like, so like when people around, I want them to be able to be comfortable and do whatever they want to do. It's right. not going to trigger me. I already got right. it in my head that, you know, right. that that's not what I'm trying to do. That's not where I'm living. So the last thing you can do is try to run from it. Mm-hmm. And that's just, that's just causing more problems for yourself. Like if, if you're not around it for years and then all of a sudden you're around it yeah you might be subject to relapse there's a weird thing of like if you're engaging but both engaging in an activity constantly and engaging in the avoidance of an activity constantly are still both forms of that activity having some fucking control control over over you you. Yeah, yeah yeah so that's why when i'm around people I want them to do what they want to do to feel right. comfortable and be able to be in a element and not be worried about me. You mm-hmm. know, that was solely the reason why I didn't um, ride on a tour bus because I didn't want anybody to feel like they couldn't get fucked up around yeah, sure. me and be like that. Sure, so I was sure, like, sure. you know, it's all good. I'll just take a van and just ride behind the bus. Sure, you sure, know? sure, sure, sure. Who who do you, when you go on tour, are you with like your girlfriend and like you have people? No, nah, I've got um, my tour manager and my DJ. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Hmm. I mean, my girl came out to a few shows. You know, we kicked it. But for the most part, it's like when I'm locked into like music mode, I can't have any outside distractions. Mm. You know, are you when you're before? Do you ever make any like adaptations to to your songs while you're performing? You're like, oh, that might sound better doing that all the time. Yeah. Sometimes it's just, you know, like, you know, you're performing songs that are so old or like, you know, these songs I wrote 10 years ago, some shit like that. And. It almost just happened like a freestyle type of mm-hmm. type of thing where I'm singing the songs because I'm not like listening to them all the time, right? Type of thing. So sometimes I get up there and I'd be rapping, and I would change a line. It just happens on its own, yeah. and then before I know it, that becomes the line when I what, perform it live. What's your What's your fan base like? Like what kind of what What demographics you seeing out there? Um. Well, this last tour it was it was crazy because it was a lot of younger kids, and I, was, you know, that I wasn't really used to that. 
Mm. Like, I didn't really see too many kids at my shows, but, you know, I guess Peggy, he has a younger fan base than me. So it was cool to see some kids out there, you know, enjoying the music and shit. But for the most part, I think, um, I don't know. I think I got to, I couldn't, I couldn't really say, you know, I don't know. How's it, how's it make you feel when people tell you that, like, you know, you, you inspire them or, or that they look up to you and whatnot? What's your kind of, like, relationship to other people's perspective on you? It, it's an, it inspired me to be honest you know before i probably wouldn't even give a shit mm -hmm. you know but now i just realize how much it is a blessing to been doing this for over 10 years now mm. so now it's almost like i'm just grateful man to be even in still in the same position to still have to drive to make music to still for for newer fans to come and hear my shit every day is almost just like a blessing man because i've seen so many people that started when i started and they not here no more yeah you know and I mean, like I say, man, music is subjective, man. You never know, man, when it's your last song or, you know, like it, it's been so many artists that I'm huge fans of and they can't, you know, people are not checking for their shit and this and that. So it's just scary, man. It's a slippery slope, man. It's uh, yeah, that's kind of back to what we you were talking about with like the when things are going good. It's like there's a weird fucking anxiety that like everything's mm -hmm. gonna tumble. I feel I feel that way. Too. like i'm you know i'm lucky enough to get to do a podcast where people can uh you know talk to me about jerking off into pies <laughs> now nah, i've gotten better with it though like i i just think it's for the most part man just gotta have faith as as you know yeah as weird as that sounds yeah. man i hate it but you gotta have faith no man. i know you what you really mean just gotta, like, you know, i know what you mean you gotta stop being such a but such a baby and be like no i got this i just feel like when you know you're doing the right shit in life right shit's gonna happen for you if you out there fucking up and you being a piece of shit then of course you got a lot of shit to worry about like karma's real man hey you want to talk to another caller sure shane his boss has a drinking problem and is constantly oversharing about it and it makes him uncomfortable yeah i guess i, I, I definitely have a lot <laughs> <laughs> a lot of experience with that Yo. Hello. What's up, Shane25 from Ohio? How's life? Oh, it's not too bad. How's it going for you? Danny, how you, how you feeling? I'm great. How you doing, brother? Good, good. Um, well, Shane, you 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 messaged in saying that um you're 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 dealing with an oversharing boss, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Tell us, tell us, tell us more, or tell us whatever you desire to tell us. Well, yeah, I work at this uh, catering company. It's actually based out of like an old slaughterhouse. It's it's a really creepy building, but it's currently being bought out by somebody else. Who's he's like, he's he's cool enough, I guess. I don't have anything against him, but he likes to overshare a lot about his personal stuff, like very personal stuff. And he he uh, told me a while back that he's got a drinking problem, and he's. Uh, going to like meetings about it every day which is cool good for him uh, but he's currently also drinking on the job as well i've i've um he, he takes little diet cokes and mixes it with whiskey i've found well here's the thing in terms of the jobs that he could be getting drunk at catering company not that bad that's fair it's and it's it's not like there's a bunch of people that work there. It's kind of just myself, basically. Are you are you like debating about like what I guess what what anguish, if any, is is this presenting to you? It's just really awkward. I don't do good with people who overshare, especially people um, that I don't know super well. And yet, you're a fan of this podcast. I know. That's weird, isn't it? Hmm. Um, Danny, you ever have somebody in your life overshare in a way that makes you feel... Yeah, it was probably like me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they say a drunk person speaks a sober mind, hmm. you know? And the only people that tell the truth is people, it's people that are mad, kids, and drunk motherfuckers. So, sounds like to me, man, it seems like he's going to meet and so he know he has a problem, which is the first step to getting help and to being on a road to sobriety. I think for the most part, all you got to do is just tell him he's making you uncomfortable. 
that's just the easiest thing to yep. do, especially when he's drunk. You know, like dog, shut the fuck up. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. he's drunk. He's not gonna take it anyway. You know. Do you drink? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, not really. No, I I smoke more than I drink for sure. Yeah. Do you, now, I, I I have a question. Why does it make you uncomfortable when when this guy shares with you? Um, I just don't really know him super well, you know. He's he he just started kind of working there a few months ago. Um, yeah, I, I I guess I can't really explain why it makes me super uncomfortable. I don't, I don't I don't know if this is just like a weird thing with maybe, me, and I guess it is like just me. what I do on this podcast. But I don't, I, I don't mind. I mean, I, unless if it's like incessant. I don't. I don't mind hearing about people's personal lives. I I, I usually find it interesting. Yeah, because I, I find humor in it, to be honest. But uh, all you yeah. got to do, like you say, if he's going to meetings and he realizes he got a problem, if you just set him down and talk to him, like, man, I think you really got a problem. You need to get some help. I bet you wouldn't talk to your ass no more because he just gonna want to drink. <laughs> so he's gonna leave you out this shit. Like, fuck that. I'm getting mm-hmm. drunk. I don't want to talk to him. He's gonna talk about I need help and this and that. So yeah, but if he's still drinking and going to meetings, then. He's fucked up. He's just—he's <laughs> all over the place. Mm-hmm. Are you trying? Are yeah, you that's, that's, trying to help him, or just you are annoyed? You just want him to leave and fuck alone. <laughs> yeah, 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 fuck yeah, if he yeah, stop yeah. drinking or not. Yeah, but yeah, that's all you got to do is have that talk with him. Like, man, I think you really need some help. I'm worried about you. you should get on the road to sobriety. I bet you're gonna leave your ass alone then. Yeah, and if he if he drinks, I, I don't give a shit. Whatever it does in his yeah. personal life, but act like care. you care. Act like oh, you care. Oh, you, oh, you, th- oh, you think you think him acting like he yeah. cares <laughs> will be like, oh, I don't want to talk to this guy anymore. Yeah, because he yeah. don't want to drink, so he's gonna leave him alone. Yeah, like, that's oh, that's man. that's that's smart. That's smart. Yeah, yeah. Just pretend like you really you really want him to stop. You're like, man, I'm worried time. about you, man. Yeah. Should I should I sit in the meetings with him? You think? Fuck no. <laughs> but <laughs> then, then he'll definitely never talk to you again. Yeah, maybe you should. Um, do do you get like? At the catering job, do you get like free mozzarella sticks afterwards when they're done? Um, I mean, I get free whatever, whatever we have there. Shit, man, getting drunk on the job and then it, having a bunch of like chicken sliders and shit afterwards—that sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, but yeah, that's all you gotta do. Just talk Maybe. to him about getting clean. He ain't gonna talk to you no more. He'll leave you alone. Hey, maybe I'll do that. Shane, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? No, I don't think so. I think I'm good. Have a good rest of the night, Shane. Thank you, Lyle. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, brother. Let's talk to Elizabeth. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello. Yes, hi. Elizabeth, how you doing? Hello. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Doing all right. Thanks for calling, man. I'm sorry. I'm excited just to get on the line. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry at all. Um, um yeah. What's going um, on? Sorry. Go ahead. No, all um, you. All you. Yeah, just want to say I'm a really big fan of you and as well as Danny. Um, I went on the Scaring the Host tour. Oh, and dope. I saw you guys, or I saw, yeah, I saw Danny on um, in Baltimore and it was amazing. <laughs> Yeah, that oh. was fun. That Where'd you play fun. in Baltimore? I can't remember. <laughs> my my friends went to that show. It oh, was okay. uh, yeah. Rams had Rams. Oh, cool. Had. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Wow. Sorry, I'm like having a little moment because I've been a fan of Danny since Triple X, so this is like really big for me. <laughs> oh, dope. Fuck yeah. Um, um. But yeah. So um. Sorry, I called in just because, obviously, being a fan of Danny, but also. Um, I'm a tattoo artist, and as an artist, I think, like, all artists kind of struggle with the same thing, but um, just, like, imposter syndrome and kind of, like, comparing yourself to other artists, and I was wondering how um, he kind of feels about that and, like, how he goes about that and just dealing with, like, not feeling like you're adequate, even when, like, everyone's telling you you're, like, an artist. Um, I think the biggest deal with that is fucking social media. I swear, like when you get caught up in seeing yeah. what everyone else is doing, 
It always makes you feel like that. And I think for the most part, when you just got to take, you got to take those social media breaks and stop worrying about, you know, like sometimes with me, just basically because I fucking do rap music. So I just wouldn't listen to rap music. And that way I can't even, I don't know what's going on. I don't, I just get myself out of that world. So I'm pretty sure you probably follow a lot of tattoo shit. So every time you go on fucking, yeah. you go online, you're just seeing tattoo shit everywhere and this and that. So just, you got to take yourself out of that world and then just work on your own shit. I think that's the best thing to do. As, as fucking simple as it sounds, but yeah, it's hard. Wow. Yeah. No, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. No, I appreciate you saying that. And I have heard that advice before, but I guess like, it's like really hard when like a lot of your career is based around social media, like getting clients and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. You just can't be yeah. paying attention to what everybody else is doing and just worry about your own shit. That's really all it is. Cause I know sometimes like us with artists struggle with that too as well you know you might see somebody you think you better than and be like oh fuck this motherfucker's doing good why fuck i'm not here i'm out here <laughs> you can't even worry about that i think everybody everybody are where they want to be in life in some sense so i think just stop worrying about other motherfuckers and just put the grind on yourself you know and just start just figuring out what yeah. you can do to make your shit better instead of looking at other motherfuckers that's really the main thing What's do you have like a uh, a specialty kind of thing that you like to tattoo? Do you um, flowers or yeah, I like um, anime tattoos actually. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm mostly doing anime, um, which in um, like the general DMV area, there's not that many anime tattoo artists. But I do compare myself to like the ones in LA, the ones in New York. You know, like all the really great artists out there. So. It is, like, yeah. probably really good to just kind of stop focusing on that shit and just focus on my own thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I struggle, I struggle with that, too, of, like, comparing myself to, to other people. And I, I always just notice it's such a, a, a time-suck distraction from, like, you know, the most, the most important fucking thing is, like, making stuff, mm -hmm. you know? And so anything that's not making yeah. stuff is just is just gonna fuck you and then and then it's weird right because you you're like oh i wish i could be where this person is but it's like in order to get where that person is you just gotta shut out all the distractions and be making stuff so it's it's like a weird counterproductive thing to do and i get sucked in on it and it's true that like you we know social do. media just we yeah, all do, we all yeah. do. Yeah. yeah yeah it's a numbers game now you see and you know yeah. everybody's just it's a rat race really you know but really, that's all it is, man. Yeah. Just just focus on your creativity and stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. I think social media has fucked us all with that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, what's your favorite um, anime? Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, what, what's my favorite anime? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to get me started. Uh, I would say uh, right now it's between Fruits Basket has always been one of my favorites. It's like a romance drama type thing. Um, and then I really am loving Jujutsu Kaisen season two right now. Um, it's like really amazing. <laughs> Are you an anime guy? I know you said you're into JRPGs. Not really. I can't say I'm an anime guy at all. I'm more of a hentai guy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You ever I'm see? Uh, okay. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay yeah me too <laughs> hey you know there's some good hentai's out there there is i've talked <laughs> about this on this podcast before that my actually the first porn i was watching was hentai so you you would play smash bros right yeah i would uh on my wii channel i would go to the internet channel and i would search up zero suit samus naked and that was that no. was some of the first stuff that oh, i ever looked up freak to. that boy a freak <laughs> Um, well, thanks for calling, Damn. Elizabeth. Oh, okay. oh, you want to plug? You got, let's do a plug. You want to plug your tattoo Instagram? Oh, my God. Really? Yeah, do a plug. What's your, what's your Instagram? My tattoo Instagram is Nessia Tattoo. That's N as in Nancy, E, C as in cat, I, A, tattoo, all one word. Um, Danny or Lyle, honestly, if you ever want a tattoo, just hit me up. I got you guys. <laughs> Oh, that's um, great. Thank, I would thanks, love to man. tattoo either of you. 
Uh, well, take All care, right. Elizabeth. Thank you Good so luck. much for chatting with me. Thank you. Goodbye. We love you, Danny. <laughs> we love you, too. Bye-bye. Uh, do you have any tattoos? Fuck no. Why fuck no? I mean, no, I, I just say that a lot. But <laughs> 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 no, I, I'm just... You, you, you said fuck no, and you looked at Joey, who has a bunch of tattoos. <laughs> fuck no, but no, um... I just um I just been scared and I think I've I've aged out of it. Mm. I was probably gonna get my first tattoo at eighteen and then I was um scheduled the appointment and everything, I was supposed to show up and then I just end up getting high and was like that's what made myself paranoid. It was like fuck that. But then it's also like another thing too, I have a lot of family members that, you know, fucked around with needles and shit like that. Mm, so yeah, like, sure. that just sure. like weirded me out too. But I love I love tattoos. I I've, there's nothing that I'm into that I am confident that I would be into forever, like that that would still be um uh uh like prominent in my life when I get older. You know, like if I got a tattoo of something right now and then years later i don't think i'm gonna identify with it anymore like if i got like yeah. master shake from aqua teen hunger force on my ankle like am i still gonna be into that when i'm 70 but then it's almost like a memory thing ain't it mm -hmm. like you know you just got you know but no i don't know i just don't want to put myself through any pain joey said can we get matching tattoos if i pay i still i still well tattoos are expensive aren't they they're yeah, like definitely they're like what, like two hundred bucks or something like that. Mm -hmm. But even I, like I say, I I feel like I aged myself out of that. I, I have to stop thinking like that, you know, like stop whatever thinking you want. that you're aged out of things. Yeah, no, like, some things are good to think to feel like I mean, you're aged out of. For yeah, sure. I know, I know, but it's just like I'm always using it as, as an excuse of some type of sense, and mm -hmm. I just felt like um. If you look at shit like that, then it's like, what's next? Dying? Like, you gotta live, you know? So it was like, fuck, get a tattoo. Get that fucking nipple piercing, you know? What What other things do you feel like you're aged out of? Um, I mean, when it comes to, like, fashion, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't want to be walking around wearing, like, a fucking Spider-Man shirt or some shit, you know? I was... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> or, like, wearing, like, Marvel clothes and shit or, like... Are you, are you into Spider-Man? Nah, I can't say this. I can't say I am, but I don't know. Something about that is weird to me. Like when you wearing motherfuckers, be dude. That's what it's like. It, uh, when I was in middle school and high school, my wardrobe was all like Marvel, yeah, Spider Man, T-shirt, shit. Like, cause, cause shit. Target, yeah, because Target yeah, would sell that shit. That's what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. that was age. But if you like, I mean, I guess, man, you know, it's old nerds and shit. But mm -hmm. I don't know. For me. I just couldn't fucking wear like fucking Marvel clothes or shit like that. Do you feel too old to collect Funko Pops? No, I don't think you're too old to collect anything. What about Spider-Man t-shirts? I mean, if you're just going to collect them and not wear them in public. I mean, as pajamas, that's probably cool. Just okay. wear them at the Korea to yourself. But you going out wearing pajama clothes at a certain age, you're going to... I'm going to think you on Roblox looking for young people. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, you're you're big into fashion, right? Yeah. Do you uh, do you ever like do you design shit? No, but that's um, I will say I have been more into independent designers than I have been like buying shit from like fashion houses and shit. Mm. That has been like my thing for like the past few years. Mm -hmm. Just like finding people on Instagram that make dope shit. Who now? Let's say there was who's like I don't know who's the most famous fashion. I don't know anything about fashion. Who's the most famous fashion designer? I want. I mean, so many. I mean, what? It, what? It, okay, if a fashion designer that you highly respected came out with like a really dope Spider-Man T-shirt, no, nah, I'm not fucking with it. But I will say one of my favorite old, like back in the day, brands was like Iceberg History, and they whole shit was about fucking cartoons and shit. Like they had a whole Simpsons collection. Mm -hmm. They had a. My favorite was they did a Milan. They did a Milan collection, but these were like thousand dollar t shirts, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, thousand they... dollar t shirts. Yeah. <laughs> did he make <laughs> what's the what's what's the most amount of money you've spent on a piece of clothing? Mm, I don't know. I mean, probably about oh, twelve thousand. It's not terrible. Yeah, I mean, it's just a coat. Okay, 
Mm-hmm. Do they do they hold their value or? I like... gave it away actually. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. Who'd you give it to? One of my homies. Okay, cool. I, you know, I want to. You know those like uh, hard. I want you know those fucking airbrush shirts of SpongeBob and he's got like a grill. Yeah. I want like a designer version of that. Hmm. If you know a guy. I mean, they used to make those at like liquor stores and shit. Yeah. You know, you had like Bugs Bunny with fucking baggy jeans on and shit. Those shirts are cool though. I'm not gonna lie. That's mm. drip. If you can actually find one from like the early nineties, like thrift, you could probably find some of that shit thrifting though. Do you um every day are are you are you very intentional with what you wear? Yeah. Really? I think that, about that it. sounds that sounds exhausting. I think about it the first thing in the morning type shit. It like, sounds right. you, can, you know uh you know the Mark Zuckerberg thing, right? What? Where he like has he has what, like a closet of like a hundred black t shirts oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. jeans and he wears the same thing every day just to eliminate that choice. But the thing is I think about it is even though I do do that, it's a conscious choice to make it look like I'm not doing that. And it's that's a, what makes you it you intentionally make your words look, look like, unintentional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds exhausting. It can be. It can be, but mm-hmm. I would I did have a um great time during this tour. I did a lot of thrifting. So I got a lot of dope shit. Okay. Do you do you wear a different uh Actually, shit. What I was, uh, do you said something on one of your podcasts that I was listening to recently about how you you haven't worn the same thing, the same on, shirt, the same shirt. Yeah, is that true? Are you ever gonna? I think I did. I think I wore one shirt twice, and that was just. Does that feel like a bad a, laundry day? Do no, you regret it, that? Does that feel like a failure to you? No, it's just. I mean, it, it just becomes one of those hard things. Like, fuck, I gotta buy some new shirts now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm always shopping, kind of. But I'm all, that's the one thing that I really wish I can just, you know, I don't know. I mean, I've been like that ever since a kid. You know, I just, I don't know. I just, it's hard for me not to buy shit. <laughs> I, I sometimes I like looking shitty, like because yeah, no, a, that's what I'm saying. There's a cha- there's a cool challenge to it of like, can I? walk into this place and be socially confident and feeling myself in cargo shorts and a fucking Zelda t-shirt. Yeah. You know? And there's a, there's a challenge to that that's enjoyable. Like, my thing is you gotta kind of dress for the situation. Like, if I'm just going around, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna fucking, you know, like, you know, put on shit that's gonna draw a whole bunch of attention to me, even though I used to. But now, at this point in my life, I just don't. But it's still gonna be some dope shit. You know, okay. like, motherfucker, probably you probably wouldn't know what it is. Or, like, you know, motherfuckers wouldn't just look at me and not realize. But it's like, no, I'm, I, everything I own is some dope shit. Like, I, I don't have nothing that's mm-hmm. just fucked up, you know? Mm-hmm. But the people who know, know. Yeah. It's almost like, if you know, know kind of thing. Is there any, like, I guess aside from fashion, is there anything uh, hobby-wise where you're like, I'm willing to, like, put down some good money on this because it's, like, because I want the quality version of it? Um... I don't know if it counts, but like, um, cause it's a part of my job. But like, music, music stuff. Music I, 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 I would say that doesn't count. Yeah. Because any anything that you couldn't theoretically write off on your taxes. Like, I find myself fucking just spending thousands of dollars on plugins, and it's like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. I don't even use half of them now. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. But just you see a new plugin come out, you're like, oh shit, that shit's dope. I gotta get that shit. You get it. What was the first ever software you were fucking around on? Um, for music? music? Yeah. No, I, I started off with hardware. Like, my first drum machine was a, oh, yeah. a SP-303. I just now got into, like, maybe a few years ago was using using the software. I never really fucked with that shit. But um, mm. my first um, drum machine was a SP-303. And then eventually I saved up some money. And then that's when the um, MPC-1000 came out. I got that. And then I've been, yeah, so I've been making beats for a long time. I just haven't even, I just never rap over my beats. You ever, like, you ever use AI to make music yes, at all? Yes, it's dope yeah. as fuck. Yeah? When it first was coming around and shit, I was hating on it. But mm-hmm. what I realized is that if, if it does cut, like, I love all the um, the AI mixing software. Yeah. Because, um, you know, you want to hate on it and shit like that, but it saves you so much fucking time. Right. And, you right, know, right. And it could, I mean, I'm not saying it, it's not the end all. Mm-hmm. It's just getting you halfway. So if you know your shit, you it's able to it save you a lot of time, where you can be creative and not have to worry about the actual fucking sound of the shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I I definitely fuck with the um 
the the mixing software and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So I I use that shit a lot. That's good. That's good that you're an optimist yeah. about it, right? I, I think what it is, I think the people that's hating on the AI shit is that motherfuckers that ain't that dope anyway. Because <laughs> not everybody gonna be able to make a trap beat through AI. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But if yeah. you if you really got some style and some right. some real talent with the right. shit, then you ain't worried about it. All it is right. is making your shit doper. Right. That's the thing. It's like if if you're if you're really that worried that AI is going to take yeah, away, that means you're what not you're that doing, dope that anyway. Not good yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, everybody yeah. be able to make a trap beat in a minute. So yeah. Even with like trying to come up with ideas and stuff and write things, like you can just type a prompt into ChatGPT and it'll generate like vague ideas, and then you can be creative and like go off of like vague ideas that it'll. Now that's it'll the generate. one thing I did hear about that I'm not fucking with. That I heard motherfuckers is using AI to write raps. Like you can mm. write a line and it'll write your next line for you. Like mm. now that's getting now that's getting fucked up. You know. You know what? I, do you think one day somebody will just pop off really hard in the rap scene and then get exposed that they've been using AI? I think it's already been happening mm. on the low. Like some of the top rappers is probably using AI already. I bet you could, that'd be sick if you you could probably like create a rapper out of ai you could like fucking use ai to make a human face they was trying wasn't they then we they shut that shit down who was trying i think i mean yeah they was one of the ai rapper that got a record deal no yeah it was a whole thing i talked about it i I was hating on it for sure (laughs) if i i wish i i'm i'm i I know that uh, oh this guy what is this guy's name yeah fuck him yeah fn FN mecca Mecca. i'm so i'm uh, this i'm i'm so bad at uh you know all these fucking guys on their podcast, they know how to like pull stuff up. Mm-hmm. I'm a terrible no, yeah, pull FN stuff Mecca, up guy. He got canceled. Well, he didn't he never even existed, so he's, yeah. he'll be fine. Yeah, that's good. Someone said Danny as Ice Spice is yeah. hilarious. Yeah, that was an AI thing. That was funny. What was it was what's Somebody that? made a um uh AI of me on Ice Spice body, my head on Ice Spice's body. And you know me, I took it. It was hilarious to me, so I shared it, but it's just showing. Oh, do you want to watch it? Nice spice, Danny <laughs> Brown. Let's see. I don't know if I can. Oh, is, is it a video or is yeah, it like a... It's a video. Oh, fuck. Okay. All right, here. I'll watch it and maybe we can put it in later. Danny Brown shares. <laughs> this is a fucking article. I know. A, isn't that I'm so saying. stupid? Is it's it? a slow day for a lot of media outlets. Yeah. Where they they gotta use this. As the word I, I I I looked it up and I saw that complex tweeted. Danny Brown <laughs> tweeted. Ice Spice generated deep fake video. Yeah. Um. Fuck. Okay. It's I'm weird, trying to find. This is so annoying that I Google it and instead of you and instead of you at first, it's showing me that. Mm-hmm. Uh. All right. I'm gonna go to videos. Up the, I just want to look. Look how many articles we wrote about that. Well, they could yeah. be using their time to like put on new artists and shit like that. This is their post. That actually sounds really good. <laughs> Brandon, I'll send you this to to put in later. But yeah, yeah that's, I feel that, like that a lot of media outlets, man, they could be spending that time like. Putting on the next Danny Brown instead of fucking posting shit like right, that, you know? Right, right. There's a guy, dead boy guys who died. For, okay, you want you want to talk to the guy who died for two minutes on his own vomit? Oh, this sounds a little dark. Hello? No fucking. Sounds like he died again. <laughs> All right. No fucking way. Marco, what's up, man? There's no fucking way I'm on call. First of all, I've seen you guys stream for like so long i'm actually hyped <laughs> thanks sick. man what's what's going yeah. on how's life sorry for being super excited no don't by the way to preface for being super hyped i have uh recently BB- bpd and adhd so if anyone in the chat is like gonna badger me over my story just know you know compulsivity it's really hard for me but it was recently my second time at the bar and I fucking died. This shit was crazy. It took me, it sounds stupid, but like after the fact, it was unrelated. I had a doctor's appointment, uh, but I'm getting too ahead of myself. So I went to a bar in um, near my downtown area with one of my coworkers. And um, I just like, it was like a bunch of awful decisions, mind you. 
uh, zero nothing in my belly. I had two medications on me, zero sleep. So it was just like a combination of, of asking to fuck around and find out. <laughs> but what's it called? My friend, he wanted to like just show me out because I told him that I've never been to like a bar. I, I have, but like, he was like, this was like my second adventure going out with him. And he's kind of like a wild card. Like he's kind of like a, I don't know, shouldn't be really hanging out with him. But he was loading me with like all sorts of cocktails and shit. And the only thing I remembered from the fact was the, what's it called? Um, what was it? He wanted to smoke outside. I went outside with him. And what's it called? Uh, yeah, that's all I remember. Just woke up at the hospital. Did, did your friend crazy. drug you? Was it crazy? No, that was the thing that was so fucking funny. Here's like a funny ass part. So when I woke up in the uh, uh, hospital, I didn't remember anything other than um, him wanting to smoke outside. And so when I woke up, uh, I was just panicked. I was fucking naked. And I saw in the corner beside me that there was a pile of my clothes. But I thought it was all my clothes. And ironically, from the fact, was the exact morning of that day. I bought these cool ass nifty Carhartt pants for my job. So I was just worried that they cut up my pants and my shirt, but I saw that my clothes was in the corner, but they only cut up my shirt. But what's it called? I panicked because I was like, oh, um, like I've never been to the hospital. I had like a bunch of IVs on my body and I called my mom and my siblings. It took them a little while to get there. And the, I feel like the nurse tried to like make me look like a fucking addict because I was kind of scared too. She, uh, my mom uh, is like sitting beside and the uh, uh, NR, like the registered nurse, was like, um, oh, so your son has like multiple drugs in his body. And she starts listing off like the medication. She's like, oh, fuck, I can remember. It was meth, which I got scared when she said meth because I'm like, what the fuck? But that was my medication for my ADHD. Then it was uh, benzodiazepine, which I stupidly thought that that was for the BPD. But that wasn't the case. And I'll, this will, like, coincide with, the, like, the prior thing. But it was meth, benzodiazepines, another medication, and alcohol and weed. And I already knew that. And I uh, told the doctor, like, that all those medications are for, like, you know? And they uh, traced back my uh, medical information, and everything came com- conclusive. It was only completely unrelated a week later, where I had to do a following... Uh, what do you call it? It was from uh, something unrelated, but it was for like um, psychiatric stuff for my BPD. And it was something like no one wants to see. Like the doctor looked at me like in awe. Like she was like, just like, I don't know. It was a look that like will forever stay with my young 22 year old soul. But she just looked at me with like such a weird but, like bewilderment. And she's like, you shouldn't be here. And she was like reading out the notes and saying like that, like, it was only so like the word Dude. of mouth because the doc I think didn't have the soul to tell me. It was only when the my doctor's like you shouldn't be here like you legally died on like your way like the Marco. benzodiazepine she was grilling me about that. Yes. <laughs> Marco. Um, yeah. What did you? What was it in was this crazy- shit that your friend that you smoked with your friend? No. Oh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about like the funniest part. The doctor wasn't gonna prescribe me my medication because she saw the benzodiazepine and i was like oh wasn't that for my bipolar and she's like that's not for bipolar like that's for like and she was like listening off stuff like this is like usually what we get for people with like really bad anxiety so she's like you either were drugged like your friend might have drugged you or you were like date raped or you're doing hardcore drugs like you're like uh, abusing and i was fucking scared i was like well like there's two fears like one that she thinks i'm like using drugs and like i'm a junkie but there's nothing wrong like you know but another part was like obviously like i got date raped and i was like trying to think very hard i'm like did anyone fight me and she even said something even scarier she's like you can also be injected but, but she's like i highly doubt someone's not gonna go in a bar and like inject you with a syringe full of, with that shit but it was only when she was doing like the research the deeper research and she's like oh they gave you the benzodiazepine while you're like uh, intubated like when you're like dying on like the ambulance i was like oh that makes sense so she passed that off but yeah, it was just a mixture of me not sleeping, my medication and shit, that caused me to happen. Had it not been for that, I would have been okay. But yeah, lesson to people: don't mix and drink. Really stupid fucking shit. Yeah. Like it only took until the doctor, like that she looked at me. She's like, "You shouldn't be here," which is something like you don't want your fucking primary doctor to tell you. It was a big fucking head trip. <laughs> 
but yeah, that is my story of me fucking dying. It was kind of funny because I had like this, like I've always had this existentialism of like what's like the afterlife, religion, and all that jazz. And ha- having that happen, like it very much like I don't know, made me more grateful, like more pep to my step. Yeah, I was going to ask you that because you seem a little too happy to be a <laughs> motherfucker that just died. I was, no, I was no, thinking to say, I was no, thinking I'm, that I'm, you I'm, seem I'm, very like happy no, and excited to be telling this, this story, no, I'm, I'm, which I'm is happy good. I'm good. With both of y'all, and it, this is so funny too because I was watching a Kill Tony, uh, and you were on it. I love your fucking music, uh, Danny Brown. I love your everything, your streams and all that shit. And I guess I was going like, I guess Danny Brown's fucking crazy because like, oh, yeah, shit. I shouldn't have been drinking all that stupid shit. Like even when I tell people that, like. I know, like, I was an idiot, a fucking massive idiot, regardless if it was, like, my mental problems or just me being me. But, like, yeah, I could have easily fucked around and found that that day. <laughs> it was fucking crazy, so crazy, Do you crazy, feel like you, crazy, you, crazy, you crazy. have a second chance at life now? Like, you know, everything could uh, almost just been over with. Like, no, that's what my, that's what's, like, what was crazy. My document says that, like, you should very much, like, you know, be grateful that, like, you're here. Like, you really shouldn't, like, and that was, like, the scary part that, like, really so, made me, like, it did dawn on me heavily, like this mm-hmm. weird gloom of like depression afterwards. Mm-hmm. Cause she's all like, I don't know. It really scared me that the doctor told me that. That's when it fully realized. And like my mom even said, like, like dumbass did it take you like a doctor, like your second time around to tell you. Cause my mom was like, when the incident happened, I just went up and I was like still going with my friends. And my mom was like, you need a rest. Like it's serious. It was only until right. like my doctor sat me down, looked me dead in the eyes and was like, yeah, you shouldn't have been like here. Like bile was in your stomach. It wasn't vomit because I thought I, I didn't eat the whole day at work because I um, skipped the work. My friends like, I want to ditch and go to the bar. I'm like, I'm fucking down. But yeah, so, this shit was so now crazy, that you have crazy. this like second chance at life and you're feeling like, what do you what do you want to do, man? What what do you what, what are you going to do with this new uh, uh, this lust new and excitement for life that you have? Yeah, this, I think it's, I've always had it, but now even more like it's that with me of like really that like i don't want to say that corny ass like full send but like you really in life have to have that like you know bravado to do shit like if no one like that's like i guess a good quote i always hear podcasters people motivational speakers say and it's really true like you can only do so much for yourself like no one like your mom ain't gonna be there your daddy ain't gonna be there your friends ain't gonna be there like you can only put your best foot forward i feel like it's taught me now more than ever to be grateful not really do really impulsive stupid shit <laughs> but yeah more and more i guess grateful and just like this do shit like at least it's better to know than to not know at all like just try shit do shit like it's okay to be anxious with anything in life like a new job speaking to a group full of thousands of fucking people or a crowd like it's normal like no one ever does that so i feel like to have i guess a subtle sense of anxiety is normal but like to an extent you know that's really hard to control but yeah, just that, yeah, man. as well as, um, it helped me that situation too, a little bit with my uh, job that I'm currently, as well as my prior job, because I worked at a, uh, I don't want to fully like, it was a CNC. What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you do now? <laughs> I, I want to say, but like, I, I'm not checking the stream right now or anything. I don't give a fuck what people say, but it's kind of, I guess, um. It's very Pacific Northwest Washington, I'll say that. It's very uh, mechanical, I guess. No, actually, no. I uh, I did a class, and they did a cool OSHA thing. And this is, like, I guess, other cool shit I could talk about. Uh, uh, I did a class for high school, which is, like, a college thing. And one of the classes I did was aerospace. And they did, like, an OSHA thing. And they basically were talking about, like, incidents in general for all jobs. And here in Pacific Northwest, there's a lot of, like, blue-collared lumberjack jobs. It showed, like, this fucked-up video of a lumberjack and, like, his finger's missing. Like, some incident happened. Yeah, it's, like, like, I don't know. That's another, I guess, with, like, the incident that happened made me way, way, I was already way more grateful in life because I watch pretty graphic content that, like, makes me humble to, like, I just drive safe, like, look both ways, like, be very safe in my job. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. like, yes. in my current job, like, I don't know, there's way more ways to get hurt. I worked at, uh, prior to this, it was like four years of uh, CNC and press break, and I witnessed like multiple people getting their fingers like blown out. That was yeah. really like traumatic for me, I guess. Yeah, crazy, uh, but with this job, crazy fucked up internet videos is one of my, uh, favorite topics. Because <laughs> top, top, it does, yeah. well, because it does <laughs> do that, it does do that for you, right? Because you see all these, uh, no. car accidents and lumberjacks getting their fingers cut off, and it makes you feel like, well, all right, no, life no. is. 
It's actually pretty good if you're not shit, though, the people in these videos. What's so crazy is that, like, all those, like, I guess, crazy shock videos, it's funny whether wherever it comes from, like, there's, like, it's been going on since the 90s, like, all the shock pages. But it's so interesting is seeing the comments of people, what they say. And some people, like, there's um usually, like, polls of, like, oh, why do you guys watch this? Like, there's always, like, that, like, you know, like, just a comment. And people usually say that. And I can heavily understand that. Like, it could very much help certain people as well as, like, deteriorate your mindset. Like, it's not for everyone. It's not some shit you should seek out. But, like, when you watch that type of shit, it's like, damn, it really makes you, like, for my, uh, my CNC and press break machine, it made me very, very, like, safe. I guess, like, that was, like, the reason why I was so safe on that job. And continue on with this I, job that I have currently. Danny, you ever watch stuff Very like that? Scary. I know that uh, on your mom's house, they watch a lot of yeah, those definitely. kinds of videos. Yeah, especially in the early stages of the internet, like the whole Rotten.com and all that kind of shit. But yeah. not, not too much now, you know. Nah, I'm not trying to see no shit like that. I used to be into, like, you know, the ISIS beheading videos and all that kind yeah, of shit. I yeah. think now oh, I do fuck? every now and then I watch some, <laughs> some fucking narco shit in Mexico mm-hmm. and they torture nah, motherfuckers, mm-hmm. but that's no, not that's something thing, that I but... seek out. It's so... I, I, I don't know why I managed to get into... I literally, Every fucking podcast, I managed to get into a conversation with someone about these videos. <laughs> it squeezes in. Um, no. Well, shit. Uh, Danny, do you have any thoughts on anything yeah, discussed um, so far yeah and, I, w- Danny, I would say man shit, i'm just so happy right now that i got in call with both of y'all i've been watching yeah i would just say on, bro like, you you're lucky you're really lucky man like at 22 years old that's still young man you're still a kid pretty much and you got so much more life to live and like you said just some impulsive decision like that can fucking just end it all you gotta think about your mom and your family shit like that and you know as me as a person I used to drink a lot and all type of shit and get myself in all types of trouble that could have ended it all it's like it's not worth it at the end of the day so i would just and say that's what man, i need to hear from someone you like should you. really Thank feel you so much, blessed Danny. man you should really feel blessed and to be able to see another day because it's not promise you know and just for you to go through something like that obviously mean you got a lot more life to live and you just put out here for a reason you know so I would just say, man, and you need to sure just it. Yeah. take it a lot more serious because it seems like you had a lot of fun dying to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, yeah. No, well, it was I, like, it was you're, Barker, you're living life a mile of a fucking minute, man. I can, I can tell, which is a fun thing. Sometimes, no, I wouldn't. I would never. Do they, that. That's funny. I never had like a moment of like it's drinking in my teenage years. Mm-hmm. Like I, ne- I realized like I guess in American society or just like people drinking i'm way 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 more of a smoker so when i don't know it was very stupid decisions that day obviously and heavily heavily on what like danny said like real real shit like my life easily could have been cut short over some stupid trivial shit that goes for i guess like i can tell that to anyone that that goes for everything like i guess even with like uh mental issues or like anger issues like you could easily lose your whole life over something really trivial and stupid like an argument yeah just any guys like that emotional so you did in the heat of, in the, Fuck, heat of the yeah. moment yeah yeah yep. um <laughs> marco Anything you got an infection you got an infectious energy marco i'm i'm uh, i'm, I'm happy for you i'm happy that you're not dead so you can go live a a, a beautiful yeah. life and of I, and uh, I doing exciting <laughs> fun things true true the, the pacific northwest washington is pretty lovely um, dude, Marco, is there any other like here. before we move on? Is there anything else you, you wanna you wanna say or any other thing? anything like that? Anything I could say? No. Yeah. Well, it's pretty much all I had to get off my chest. Or any other details or any like I, I don't know. That's pretty much all I had to say about the internet. Other than Danny, any what final thoughts? Oh. Yeah, man, I'm gonna pray uh, for you, this man. Sounds, this sounds like... <laughs> <laughs> this, this God sounds, bless you, man. Like, hey. This is the funniest. This, this is the funny. Well, <laughs> I don't know if I should say this or not during like the thing because this is like uh, the thing I kind of mentioned in the chat, but like this is was weird it? and funny. Because okay, for both of you, have you guys ever been to the doctor, like hospital, like emergency, emergency shit? You're asking us if we've ever been to the doc, oh, like to the hospital, like for an emergency. Yeah, yeah. You ever been to the hospital yeah. for an emergency. I've been hit. Have by you guys my ever had a fucking catheter? <laughs> have you ever gotten a fucking? Oh catheter no, I ain't never had that though. The that's, catheter, that's oh, what they put fuck. that in your penis, yeah. right? Did you have a catheter? Yes. Jesus, no, that's the thing. I fucking woke up and I was fucking naked. And I was like, where the fuck is my clothes? I seen the corner and I thought like my shirt was there because it was like all black fit. It was uh, these cool black double knee car pants and a black shirt. I didn't really give a fuck. 
that they what? cut my shirt up. But when I saw, like, I was, like, naked from, the, like, everything. But, like, they had uh, this, like, weird, like, it had, like, a handle, like, a bottle. Like, you just, I just stuck my wang in there and pissed. But, like, it was only after the fact that, like, when I went home, this sounds so fucking disgusting in TMI, but, like, blood came out. And I fucking panicked for, like, five seconds. I was about to, like, Google and like, put myself in, like, a, oh, shit, I got fucking fall cancer or some shit. But, no, I realized that they fucking, like, just shoved that shit in me while I was in the car and then, like, removed it out. And what I didn't know is that they're supposed to give you, like, numbing cream, I guess. And he didn't give me none of that shit. So I had, like, this weird, uncomfortable fucking pain for, like, a week after that. So I very much taught my lesson not to drink like a fucking idiot. Never get in the fucking hospital. That was well, really Marco, uncomfortable. <laughs> um, I, hope, I, hope that the, I hope the graphic image of your bloody penis inspires many of the people listening to make to, better to choices in their lives. Like yeah. Drink fucking safely and responsibly. And, yeah, have fucking friends that will, like... And, and you know what was worse? I was, like, five minutes passed out, and it took him that fucking long to realize that I wasn't, what? like, around there. Until he saw, like, my unconscious fucking body just, like, limp, like, family guy position. <laughs> well, have a good night, Marco, and uh, I wish you and your penis a, a, a long, safe recovery. I mean, a short, safe recovery. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Keep okay, on fucking, bye, Marco. Uh, doing what you're doing. Thanks, bye. man. Bye. <laughs> That's fucking scary, man. Yeah. Yeah. He sounds like he's doing all right with it. He so does. He sounded. <laughs> <laughs> he sounded. He sounded psyched. I mean, I'm not worried about it. He got a new leash on life or something, you know. But I think when you're that age, you don't really understand how serious something like that could be. Maybe mm-hmm. you know, because me, I've been getting fucked up as long as he's been living, and I've never been through a scare like that. Really? You no. Know? You haven't had a time where you were like, were like, oh fuck, I almost died. I mean, I probably was. I just didn't know it. I was just, you know, I'm pretty sure I've been laying in the bed a few times like oh no this might be the end but Mm -hmm. (laughs) but never like having to go to the hospital or getting something like that i'd never been through anything like that so Mm -hmm. but if i did i think that would be enough of a scare for me to you know be like fuck this shit you know i ain't i ain't doing that but i I guess i I felt like i was getting close to something like that happening it was a few you know close calls or where you just be like man i don't know how i woke up today type shit Mm. Like being blacked out drunk is like the worst shit ever, man. To be honest, mm. um, I feel like, but yeah, I feel like Marco, uh, he's got he's got a positive energy yeah. to himself. Everyone we've talked to, but tonight, maybe if you died, you would feel. Like, you get what I'm saying? Are you still here? You probably would be that excited about living life again. You know, yeah. it's almost like when you go skydiving or some shit. Yeah, like oh shit, I, I'm happy. You know, so maybe that's what it is too. You know. Isn't that cool? I I always think about you can always that's something access. You don't have to, you don't have to almost die to access that. Like yeah. every day, if you really want to, you can operate from that perspective of mm-hmm. oh, it's just it's cool to be alive and enjoy life. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's a big deal for a lot of people, man. We take this shit for granted. You know, and not realizing it's just a blessing just to fucking wake up. You're not fucking promised tomorrow, man. So just us being here, man, that's just good enough. I think every I, I everyone we talked to today, except for the Roblox girl. No, no, I'm not no even no no the Roblox girl. Everyone we've talked to today, I'm not worried about. Everyone no, seemed had, like they're doing all right. They had a positive energy to them. Yeah. You know? So yeah, that's for the most part we, I mean the guy dying though that was a little dark for me you know it, it, on paper it's dark but yeah. he seems i mean no i mean he like it's me one of the best things that ever happened better to him. about it maybe that's just his adderall i mean his fucking <laughs> 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 you know his adhd medication got him going crazy like that but yeah when you're on medications and shit like that man you can't drink like he has to realize that like that's just out of the that's just out of the question man like drinking and medications is like and you know doing fucking prescriptions and shit that's like mm-hmm. the worst shit ever you know that's almost worse than fucking getting street drugs and some shit which is crazy mm-hmm. fucking alcohol and fucking pharmaceuticals man took a lot of motherfuckers out man for real mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody- <laughs> that's what i'm worried about you know like where he just did take it that serious and he like fuck it man that shit was kind of dope yeah yeah he uh, cared more about them Carhartt double knees than he cared about dying. Are you are you into any of the like skydiving extreme sports? Um, I, I would like to go skydiving, but I'm not seeking it out. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm not like trying to figure out how to do yeah. it, but if it ever uh, uh, came across my shit in life and was like, all right, fuck it, I'm down. See, no, you're, see, the, whoever said that in the chat is, is or the, the, he might get addicted to the thrill of almost yeah, dying. Yeah, like that adrenaline rush, like, you know? Yeah. But I don't know, man. Hopefully, man, like you said, the, the catheter and the dick thing, man, and I don't know. Like I say, he's still young, so maybe he's not taking it as serious as someone my age would. Mm. But nah, man, like fucking passing out, drunk, and all that shit is fucked up, man. That was the one thing I was really worried about, man, is like something like that happening to me, man. And especially now with like all this fucking fentanyl and all this mm. fucked up shit, mm. like you can just one night of having fun can just turn dark, you know? Mm. So mm. did you did you have you know a share of nights where you woke up like like to the point where you're like you don't remember all the time yeah it was a lot where i'll be like man people telling me shit that i did and i'm like fuck you know mm -hmm. it's just it's fucked up man it is it's really when you when you on that where you know i guess you know when you're young and you know something like that happened every blue moon but when it's like fucking every other day mm -hmm. like you need help bro <laughs> you need to have an intervention someone needs to sit you down and really and so i was just i mean I, I guess you know it takes you know you have to go through certain shit to get to certain shit so i guess if i'd never been through anything like that i probably wouldn't have went and got help so i mean i'm happy for everything that i've been through to be able to go get help because i always i was the type of motherfucker that talked shit about going to get treatment and rehab really and shit like that. really yeah, you, what like, was your what was your opinion on it previously? like you want to quit doing something just quit like motherfucker you know yeah. if you feel like it's a problem you could but it ain't that easy for a lot of people man like a lot of people don't even know like why they getting fucked up you know mm. it, it, it could start off as being fun and if you know it man it's just using it to fucking mash your emotions and then did you have did you have to go through like several hypotheses as to why you were getting fucked up before you found the 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 true one i mean i kind of knew in some sense you know and it i never was a drinker like that my drinking actually started from touring like mm. I would drink, you know, I was more of a, a fuck with weed or, you know, other shit. But drinking for me, it started off as just me being on tour and, you know, having a drink before I go on stage and maybe having an, another drink to power down after I get off stage. And then before I know it, you know, after years of doing that, then I'm finding myself drinking at home. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And then I get to the point where I'm just it, drinking every yeah. day. Yeah. It's when I, it's like when you have a thing where like you have some like clear boundaries with it, and then you kind of start to encroach on the boundaries yeah, a little yeah. bit, and then all of a sudden you're it's out of control. Yeah, like you don't. I didn't know I was a fucking alcoholic mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. until I just you know you just come to the realization. Like you know you had that talk with yourself. Like, no, Do you, are you uh, are you off of weed now? Yeah, too? I didn't have any intentions on stopping to smoke weed when I went to treatment. It was just to get off alcohol, but. I learned so much about myself during that process and just everything. And I told myself I was going like, I'm wasn't going to stop smoking. But then when I got home, you know, started doing therapy and shit and just, you know, it, it could be a gateway. Yeah. For me. I'm not saying for everybody, you mm. know, but it could, you know, it does alter your thinking in some sense. And I can totally see myself having a great time, too much fun, smoking weed, get high, might be at some cool party or something. Somebody offer me a drink and then my fucking high mind be like, yeah. it's not that bad. Right. I, right. I've been right. clean. Okay. I'm not going to drink tomorrow. And right. Drink right, before right. I know it, I'm back on the fucking Ferris wheel. So. Right. 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 It's hard because I'm, um, and I've talked about this on here before, but I uh, like, there's so many models of stoners that are like successful. Mm -hmm. Like when Seth Rogen gets on and he's like, yeah, I'm a multi-million dollar, uh, you know, I do everything I do is, is while I'm stoned. And I see that and I'm like, Oh fuck. I wish I could do that. I wish yeah. I could be one of those. Like in, in high school, there were, there were these kids who would get super stoned and then do their homework. Mm -hmm. Like I could, I was wished I could be that kind of product, have that productive balance. But, don't get it's me wrong fun. now I, I love weed like i still miss it i probably think about smoking every day i just mm -hmm. make a conscious decision not to and i find out that i mean it's not like fucking rocket science i'm way more productive without it you know yeah, what i'm saying like yeah, when yeah. i used to sit around like when i first got out of rehab and shit it was i couldn't sleep for shit like it was i was sleeping good in there but when i got home it was like like what did i used to fucking do with all this time now yeah. 
Yeah. It's like I'm bored and I've realized that I was just using weed for anything. Like I'm nothing to do. Smoke weed. Nothing to smoke, you know? So even like playing video games, it took a long time for me to even start back enjoying video games because I was so used to doing it while smoking weed. Yeah. You know? Do you um do you do you have like a like do the whole sponsor thing? I did in the beginning, but then after a while it just I started to feel like um just that whole shit felt a little cultish to me, like going to sure, meetings and shit. Sure, and sure. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, you, you know, you got it. But I don't know, man. Everybody's kind of different. But no, nah, for me, for the most part, I, I, I did a couple like online shit. But the thing that resonated with me the most was like doing like the Dharma shit, which is like going like meditation classes and yeah. shit. I like that the most and like smart recovery. But for the most part, I mean, when I went on tour, a lot of that shit fell off. Like I haven't been to therapy None of that shit since I've been back. It's so, it, when you're on a tour like that and you're traveling every day, it's hard to keep a routine. Mm -hmm. It's like almost impossible. But I'm not overconfident in it. Any day I know I can fuck up. So the best thing for me to do is just, you know, as dumb as it sounds, cliche as it sounds, just take one day at a time, man. And I just, you know, keep myself busy. Are you a uh, uh, religious guy at all? I know that. I mean, I have sponsor. been. Yeah. I mean, um, being there, that was like one of the one things that kind of made me feel good and shit like was going to the church and they had like a spiritual advisor and i would go see the spiritual advisor and every time i would do that shit i would just feel good for some reason like mm. no matter how, you know i know i'm at the fucking bottom to be in fucking rehab and just feel like a fucking failure but every time i would like go to the church or like go see the spiritual advisor and shit I always left feeling good and shit so mm. yeah it definitely did give me like a spiritual awakening kind of thing when when you were were you were you raised religious at all? Yeah, I used to go to church every fucking Sunday. I hated that shit though. Mm -hmm. There's almost a weird like uh that when you're an adult, if you when you're because as a kid it sucks because you're getting dragged. Mm -hmm. But when you're an adult, if you make the decision to go, it can almost be a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, I I live right across the street from a church, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna start going to church and shit. Mm -hmm. But I'm still, I'm like, fuck that shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I deal with it on my own terms, you know. Yeah, I. I went to a uh, I went to Overeaters Anonymous once. I haven't been back since. I should go. It was cool, but uh, like uh, people would talk about, bit like God is. I, I don't know if you've been to like the AA meetings, but like God, God is like it's, it's 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 in the background. Like when people talk, yeah. like they'll talk about like the higher power and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And definitely. I remember like I, people would would tell their stories and they would mention a higher power and like I wasn't. I just subbed in my own interpretation of what that yeah. meant which wasn't necessarily always like uh you know a, a god like a dude but you know could just be the higher power of of i don't know man like uh yeah i know what you mean that, yeah, that, I mean, yeah. you can sub you can sub in your own yeah it's just, interpretation that's really what that. i was saying like that's the whole faith thing just yeah. believing in something it could yeah. be fucking it could be a gecko <laughs> <laughs> but just believe it in god something is a gecko. Just, you know but yeah, man, that, that that helped me a lot, to be honest. I mean, when I was in jail, that's what fucking helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Believing in something, that shit was going to be better when I got out. And having some kind of faith. Once you lose faith and you don't care about shit, that's when, you know, that's when, that's probably why I was using so many fucking drugs and drinking so much. Because I didn't, you know, just didn't care no more, man. Mm. What do you, what, what gives you faith now? Um, Helping others. Hmm. Just being able to share my story with everybody else and letting them know, man, that, you know, no matter what you're going through, man, somebody like me, you know, being an example for them now, you mm -hmm. know, I went through mm -hmm. that shit, you know what I'm saying? Just showing them that you can still make it out that shit. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's my whole journey now. I just want to help now, man, whether it's through my music or just meeting people and talking to them, you know, I, you can change somebody's life with one conversation type shit, you know? Mm -hmm. So just being in that position mm -hmm. to be able to. You know, to have that voice, you know, and just to talk to people, man. So, yeah, I feel like I got my new leash on life with that. Mm. And it makes you it makes you feel good to yeah, do that. Yeah. You it know? keeps me on a straight and narrow, you know. One of the things I like about doing uh, this this show is like I feel like uh, uh, it's a fun like I get out of my own because every day of every day I'm like e e wrestling in my own overthinking shit. You were talking earlier about just like overthinking my own fucking life and all of my own problems and shit. And it's fun to get out of that and like talk to somebody else about whatever's going on mm -hmm. with them, you know, and it gives you perspective on your own life, you know? Yeah. Definitely. And, you know, just being able to have that voice, like I said, and 
Like, you know, sometimes, you you know, like I say, we just normal motherfuckers just like everybody else, too. But you never know that one person that reached out to you and said something to you, how much, you know, like people calling in and just them mm-hmm. being able to come in. It fucking makes their day. It fucking mm-hmm. changes shit, you know? So you helping motherfuckers, too, at the end oh, of the day. I you hope know? so, man. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> That's what this show is based on, this shit, sometimes. You, know? you want to do one final one before okay. we go? I would say something. Okay, up. cool. Let me ask first, d- chat. Do you have any questions or, or stuff for Danny that you wanna you wanna talk about? Can Danny confirm if he was or was not wearing trip pants? What does that mean? Yeah, no, they weren't actually trip. They were actually um a um designer out of Houston, Texas. He made those and they do look like trips, but they're not trips. Let's see. Do you remember playing Middlelands Festival? Middlelands, no. I probably was blacked out drunk where is middlelands festival i don't know i don't remember no danny how was getting put into gta 5 you were in gta 5 yeah that's sick um it was great man i love all the guys at rockstar and um they always reach out to me to do stuff still had a relationship with them so but yeah man it was you know it was great and i don't know it's, it's one of those things where i can't believe i did that shit and it makes it hard for me to play the fucking game i never even fucking <laughs> finish yeah GTA because you're afraid you afraid of hearing your own voice yeah I'm, I'm the first fucking song you hear and then they i did my own um downloadable content i had my own shit so it's just hard for me to now i can't it's like i'm too close to it i can't even really enjoy it right so, right yeah but it was a lot of work though they actually came to detroit Fucking, you oh, know, cool. we recorded for fucking months doing that shit, man. So, but it was fun, man. Shouts out to the homies at Rockstar. Did you see the GTA 6 got leaked? I seen something about it, but I don't really know too much. There was like a 16 year old kid who like hacked into Rockstar mm. and he got thrown in jail. But I, 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 was, I was thinking about it. He's probably like the coolest kid in jail. Like that's got to be the best thing to be thrown into juvenile hall for is leaking GTA yeah. 6. Yeah, but. Jail fucking sucks. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Uh, Danny, are you ever going to hop back on Final Fantasy for, uh, 14? That's the new one, right? That's the one that just came out? Oh, you talking about online? Yeah. Nah. They I said kinda, they, Someone said they played with you when yeah, you started Heaven's I kinda, Ward. Yeah, I kind of... I, yeah, I was super into it, but I kind of got out of it. No, I don't know, man. I just... It's a little clicky. They're a little clickish in that motherfucker, man. It's almost like the VR motherfuckers that just sit in the mirror and won't talk to you. Someone wants to know what your f- very first job was. My very first job was I worked at a, um, a Sweeten House, which is a buffet. I actually um, allowed on my job application because you're supposed to be 16 to work in Michigan, and I was only 14, so I allowed on my job application and forged my work permit. And I worked there till I was 16. I was a pot washer making 450 an hour. So they knew I was too young. They was slave laboring me. And once I was old enough to get a job, I quit and started selling weed. Mm. <laughs> I worked at an old country buffet, too. I was just working at buffets and shit as a kid. I worked at a Burger King, but I was really just selling weed to everybody there. You ever, um, are you are you a buffet fan personally? Now it's, now it's nasty to me because I yeah. know the type of shit we used to be doing back yeah. there. So I'm like, fuck, but, uh. No, I, I I can't say. Um, I I haven't been to a buffet in over ten years, man. Um, there was a Chinese buffet near my school called the Hibachi Grill, and all the food was uh, stale, but I loved it. Yeah, I mean, as a and you're a teenager, you you younger, like you know, buffets and shit, they cool and shit. But once you get like a certain age, I feel like it's that's just disgusting, man. Like now, I can't even think about going to a buffet. Um, all right, let me. I'll, I'll read off a few options. You tell me what sounds interesting to you. Zach, 18, wants to discuss the complicated relationship he has with his mom who stole some money from him. We have Joshua, 34, feels like he reached a third life crisis. We have Sam. 31 one of her exes and one of her friends wants to have a threesome with her and she does not know what to do about that she know what to do (laughs) (laughs) hello hello what's up sam yo what's going on how's it going i'm not not a girl by the way but i'm I'm okay with 
you saying that. All right, Sam, I see the blue screen in the background is uh, slowly peeling off, so we ha- we should make this quick. Okay. No, I'm, I'm mainly kidding. You we'll can, make it quick. What's up? What's going on, Sam? How's life? Uh, it's it's all right. It's all right. Um, I guess yeah. I just had some advice, or not? I didn't have advice. I'm asking for advice. I should say. Um, yes, what's up? It's a uh, the the two um ladies involved in this this predicament. One of them is a an ex, and uh, the other one. Uh, they were not particularly. They, they, how do I how do I even say this? They were like enemies. They were like not close friends at all. At a certain point, they really did not like each other. They hated each other. Okay, yeah, they hated each other, and now they're like cool again. And in the past few weeks, not all three of us together, but separately, like this idea has just sort of come about. And uh, it's I just. I don't, I'm not sure if it's a decent, uh, it might be a good idea. I don't know. I'm just, I just, I'm, I'm asking for a third opinion, basically, or a fourth opinion, I guess, technically. I guess if you thinking about it, that must mean you can't handle it. So you probably shouldn't do that, man, because a threesome is very hard, man. You, you think it's hard enough pleasing one woman. Imagine pleasing two. So I would say you probably don't want to put yourself through that type of situation if you don't think you can handle it. Why don't you think, Sam, why don't you think you can handle it, though? Why do well, you have this lack of confidence like, in your abilities? I'd oh, say just do it for the so story. Weirdly, that's not, weirdly, the, the confidence in my ability is not the issue. It's more of, like, the weird, the potential weirdness for the future. Mm. It wouldn't be weird, y'all, just to be doing it all the time now. It's going to be more weird if you turn it down. That's that's fair that's fair <laughs> yeah okay um I, lo- I i gotta say i love your laugh danny thank you <laughs> it's every every time i every time i hear it it makes me so happy um yeah no y'all y'all make really good points but it's just you know the thing that's being talked about maybe it's just something that should that should happen because you know it's not like I don't know. And maybe if it happens and then it's weird, whatever. Yeah. Is this something you've been wanting to do for a while? <laughs> I, I, it sounds like we hit a, a nerve uh, it, of some kind. Uh, uh, I don't really know how to answer that, to be quite honest. If uh, you don't know how to answer that, it kind of sounds like the answer is yes. Yeah. I say you know uh, what to it's do. It's something man. I just... hadn't thought about. It's, you know, it's one of those things. I feel like a lot of people, you know, this is not a situation that comes up in most of their lives. So as far as like the reality of the situation, like it's only something in the past like couple, the like, past few weeks that's been like, oh wow, that could be a thing. It's, I I I mean. It, we can't tell you what to do necessarily, but you, I, I think when Danny, when you were like, if you're asking, it sounds like the answer. Is, it yeah. sounds like something you're, uh, you're that. No, is, that's a good it, point. You're curious and excited about. So I don't know, man. I think you you're just trying to brag to us that you got a threesome lined <laughs> up. You're like y'all motherfucker sitting it's, around with gecko is, paint on. I got two bitches ready. It is. <laughs> it is not lined up. <laughs> I need. That, okay, that that hasn't been clear. It's not lined up. Oh, all right. <laughs> and for that, I apologize. It's not lined up. No, I'm not. That's, that's, that's for... not what this is about. Well, Sam, you, it worked. Yeah, I think I'm jealous. I, I'm jealous of you, and I think that your life sounds really cool. And I think that if you don't feel that way, you should start feeling that way. You got bitches. I, I've got. Damn it. Who are you well, with, by the you. way? Who are you, who, who's this person giggling in the background? Oh, it's um, I'm one of the girls. I'm Christina. Oh, you're wait. You already got one of the girls with you. I told you he was stunting on me. <laughs> yeah, no, like we. Uh, yeah, I mean, like we've been having sex, and maybe I don't know. Thinking about involving Emily, I don't. Like she offhandedly admitted it might be okay, but she's like, I don't know. That would be weird because. They dated like what I don't know what four years ago, yeah, something like that, yeah. And now I'm 
fucking Sam. I don't know. So I don't want to be weird. I don't want her to get like upset that I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to like hurt my friend, girlfriend, you know. But she's but she, why would it be, why would it hurt her if she's at, if it was her idea? So well, like it was really time. her. It, was it maybe my idea? Actually, I think it was your idea. Yeah, it was my idea. I don't know. I just don't want her because well, she does freaks, the thing where she's like, yeah, that's okay, <laughs> and then it hurts her feelings like later. <laughs> Um. Well, look, I if I had to put money on like what I think you're going to end up doing after this phone call, it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like you're gonna do it, and I hope you have a good time. I hope you have a good time in the moment. I really do. Um. And I don't know if you want to if you want to borrow three gecko costumes and make it even steamier. You let me know. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. Uh, Danny, any final thoughts? That'll be a second conversation. No, I'm, I'm, huh? I'm, I'm upset. He's living a life. You're, what? I'm, a, I'm just a gecko. Yeah, hearing about it. Yeah. See now, you, now, you, now you guys, now you guys have to do it because, or else it would have just been in vain. Yeah. Now I'm a jealous gecko. Okay. Um, now we have to do it. Sam, anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um. Practice to the people at the computer. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Just be. Be safe. Be nice to each other. Uh, Danny, huge fan of Triple X. Love the stuff you've been doing with Peggy. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, man. I'll you know, well, well, I'll let you know how it goes next time. Sounds like you guys got a collaboration of your own to get to. <laughs> That's yeah. For one, one before the other, obviously. But but thank you for the opportunity. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Woo. Um. I was actually I was I was watching a different pod I was watching a, a different podcast with you on it and you were asked this question. You ever you ever have a threesome? Uh, um, yeah, a lot, <laughs> a lot of threesome. <laughs> nice, sick. I mean, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, to what be uh, what I mean, what issues did you run into? I mean, it's just like I said, it's it's a lot of hard work. I mean, there's nothing worse than having a trash threesome. Well, you didn't live now up you got because now you got two people yeah, talking well, shit you didn't about live up your, to your expectations. At this point in my life, I'd rather have just one person. I mean, you know, a lot of that shit was drug fueled, alcohol yeah. fueled, yeah, shit. You know what I'm saying? But now it's like eh, I ain't even. Damn, I'm a one woman man now. Nice man. I make love now. <laughs> I, I gotta say, I was I was watching a lot of podcasts with you on mm-hmm. them, like in preparation for this, and uh, you know, obviously, I, I, don't, I don't know you very well personally, but you do, you seem calmer is that uh, uh, fair to say yeah definitely i mean um yeah I, I just was going through a lot the past few years so you know and i'm just at a spot in my life like i said just um not living in my head so much and just enjoying the moment cool i think i was putting myself i was stressing myself out so much that i wasn't even living life you know so worried about bad shit happening and now i wouldn't even enjoying the good shit that was in front of me so mm-hmm. now i'm just mm-hmm. feel blessed you know Fuck yeah! Well, dude, thank thanks so much for doing this, and uh, I'm I'm very happy for you that you seem like you're in this uh, new era of life that that you're very happy about. Thank you for having me, man. I've been watching your shit for some years now, so it's oh, dope cool. to be on here, man. Cool, 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 dude. Is there anything you want to like? Uh, do you have, do you have any plugs or anything coming up that you want to tell the people about? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you can watch my podcast, the Danny Brown Show, every Tuesday on Wild Mage, you know, and um, new album coming very sooner than motherfuckers think so it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun and if you haven't already check out what i for for, for anyone who, who who hasn't heard you like where where should they start as far as music yeah um mm-hmm. i mean I, I guess you know you can just i don't know i wouldn't say i don't know because every album i would say is kind of like my babies and they're all kind of different from each other mm. So I don't know. It's, it depends on what the person into and what they're going through life, what's going on in their life at the moment. Mm-hmm. But I would say, if, I don't know, the best shit to do is probably start with Triple X and work your way up or start with, you know what I'm saying, and work your way down. Or just listen to the Peggy shit. I would say that's the most funnest, not the trauma dump. <laughs> so the Pride the JPEG Mafia album, you know. Check out Scaring the Hose. Yeah, that's a fun one. We had fun making it, you know. Beautiful. Hey, Gek, bless you, Danny. Thank you, man. You too, brother.